Now, we bring to you a live service from the Apostolic Center of the Cry of the Spirit Ministries, Nairobi, Kenya. Ministering under God, Apostle Richard E. S. Dekin. Sit, relax, and participate as we make ready our people prepared for the Lord. Come on, place a demand on the mantle. Mantles are badly distributed. It is mantles that will help us to fulfill the assignment. Every assignment needs a mantle. Every assignment needs a mantle. Lord, I want to generate its everlasting life. Give me the mantle. I want to fulfill my assignment. Give me the mantle. Cover me with your mantle today. Cover me with your mantle today. Jesus, cover me with your mantle that I may generate everlasting life. That I may generate everlasting life. Wherever I go, that I may generate everlasting life. That I may generate everlasting life. Open your mouth and pray. That is what I've been missing in your life. A mantle. A mantle from the Lord. 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 Come and pray. A mantle from the Lord. That is what you need. That is what you need. That's what you need. That's what you need. You just need a mantle from the Lord. 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 La kalamo setele kaya baba. Rekolo bro setele kalamo setele. Rapa baba kedele kolo bro setele kaya baba. Rapa baba kedele kolo bro setele. Rapa baba kedele kaya baba. To cover you, to protect you, to cover you, to protect you, to help you fight the battle, to help you fulfill the assignment that you tread upon serpents and scorpions. That you tread upon serpents and scorpions. Mali masata ni kolo brosata ni, raba baba baka dali kolo brosata ni, dika la brosata ni koyo bo, kolo brosata ni kaya baba baba, riba baka dali kolo brosata ni, come on pray 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 ask for, dika la brosata ni koyo bo. Rabba baba baba kada le kala brosata le, re kala brosata le kala brosata le, re baba baba kada le kala brosata le, mali masa te kala brosata le, re baba baba kada le kala brosata le, li baba kada le kala brosata le kaya. In Jesus name we pray. going to go into a very serious session right now and I will tell you what will happen shortly.
as I pray and ask the Lord to release the special mantles you need to fulfill that assignment. Some of you are going to feel as if somebody's wearing you a suit from behind. Like somebody's wearing you a garment from behind. That's how you're going to feel. Some of you are from very hot spiritual zones that you need this mantle to be protected and also create impact. So lift up your two hands as we lift up our spirit. You're going to pray and tell the Lord I make a covenant with you today to be yielding to your spirit and be sowing to please the spirit that I will not generate negative energy around me. Open your mouth and pray. That I will not sow to please the flesh and allow corruption to flow out of me. As you give me this mantle, I will use it to sow to please the spirit. As you give me this mantle, make a promise to the Lord. I will use it to sow to please the spirit. I will not use it to sow to please the flesh. I will use it to sow to please the spirit. I will not use it to sow to please the flesh. I will use it to sow. Make a promise to the Lord. To sow to please the spirit. I will never use it to sow to please the flesh. I will use it to sow to please the spirit. I will never use it to sow to please the flesh. Open your mouth and pray. do what you will use the mantle to do tell him what we use it to do what you will use it to do open your mind and pray Consecrate a vow unto the Lord. 
consecrate the fire unto the Lord. Consecrate the fire unto the Lord. Consecrate the fire unto the Lord. Consecrate the fire unto the Lord. I will use the mantle to show to please the spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord, so lift up your two hands and surrender yourself. No more movement. Anybody who come in should not get in. No more movement. See his glory. Let's sing it together. See his glory. See his glory come down as we lift up our voice as we lift up our voice kingdom give me your attention quiet 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 give me your attention in god's kingdom there is order and protocol we are not talking about anything this morning but a mantle of grace that matches the ranking of a child of god the order in god's kingdom is he will bring you to a spiritual authority that he would take the mantles in that authority and drop on you. Because the authority have used the same mantles. So as I pray, God will take from what he has given me and transfer to you. Lift up your two hands. Keeper of his covenant. You said what you do for one, you would do for all. You sent a word to Jacob and enlightened Israel. What you have done for me in my days of beginning when I was just your child. Not this error that you have taken us, matured us further. But those things you did in our days of going everywhere and demonstrating your power to shut down jealousy, to defend your jealousy, to redeem the fallen gods. I ask, oh God, that the same flame, the same mantle, the same prophetic flame, the same prophetic mantle, the same apostolic vigor, the same apostolic grace, let it be released now. Now. In the name of Jesus. That everyone who is hungry Everyone who is thirsty, everyone that needs protection from your throne, 
let the mantles be released right now to cover to change the energy content to cover to change the energy content the power of god Ooh. we are the garment we are your people the garment of power the garment of honor the garment of power the garment of honor the garment of power the garment of honor the garment of power whoever have their garment torn in the realm of the spirit whoever have been stripped naked holy ghost move clothe them back clothe them back there are 120 more people please help me count there are 120 more people that are sensing the spirit lord clue them back clue them back clue them back whoever has been stripped naked whoever need this energy to generate everlasting life wherever they are let your power touch let your power touch holy ghost touch everyone who is naked in the spirit touch and clothe them touch and clothe them with a mantle touch and clothe them clothe them from their enemies blindfold the enemy not to see them again wrap them with a mantle of light wrap them with a mantle of righteousness wrap them with a mantle of authority the power of god let no one be left behind lord you are the king of this house you are the builder of your church you say you will build your church and the gates of shall not prevail against it we are your church a lot of us are naked in the spirit a lot of us are without rank a lot of us are without mantles a lot of us are generating the negative energy and right now we have come before your throne asking for a change let your power touch out of your belly let them break forth rivers of water out of your belly let it break forth let rivers of water break forth the rivers of water break forth out of your body i command in the name of jesus out of your spirit the rivers of water break forth i command out of your spirit the rivers of water break forth the power of god oh. every great destiny every great destiny in this house every warrior of righteousness this is the hour for you to give them the regalia of a warrior the common anointing of a warrior the common flame of a warrior somebody help ushers please help somebody help the uncommon flames of a warrior somebody is seeing uncommon flames uncommon flames of a warrior that is a mantle upon you the uncommon flames you begin to burn in the holy ghost out of your belly the flames of the throne room will begin to come out of your mouth they will come out of your system they will come out of you as you pray as you fast as you study the word the flames of the spirit 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 in the name of jesus let them burn let them feel your life 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 let the flames of the spirit feel your life let the flames of the spirit feel your life let the flames of the spirit feel your life let the flames of the spirit feel your life i prophesy let them feel your life there is someone your the prophetic anointing is, is upon you your lips are burning like fire you are feeling like your lips are moving that's the prophetic anointing you're feeling like your lips are moving they are moving faster that's a prophetic anointing the lord has 
put a sword on your lips. He has put a sword on your mouth. He has put a sword on your mouth because of your enemies. He has put a sword on your mouth because of your enemies. He has put a sword on your mouth because of your enemies. Holy Ghost, touch! That from this day you begin to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by enemies hurt you from this day you begin to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy all the powers all the powers of the enemy fill my cup Lord I lift it up Lord Come and quench the thirst of my soul. Bread of heaven, fill me till I thirst no more. Fill my cup, I lift it up. Make me whole. Fill my cup, Lord. Fill my cup, Lord. Everyone, lift your hands and sing it. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench the test of my soul. Come and quench the test of my soul. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven. Fill me till I want no more. Fill my cup. I lift it up. Silent, everyone lift up the door and silent. All the people in the choir get alert. Lift up your toes and get very, very alert. The Lord asked me to pray for you. So lift up your toes and get alert. Lord, send your angels to them right now. Right now, wrap them with a the mantle of protection. Jesus protection from diseases protection from destruction protection from diseases protection from diseases protection from destruction every one of you in the choir come and stand before me here please Come on, just stand before me, lift up your two hands. I need some ushers behind them. As I pray for them, people in the congregation are going to receive some flames of the spirit also. Lift up your two hands wherever you are in the congregation. No movement. Forget about this person standing by your side. The Lord said to me, want to wrap you with a mantle. Spirit of the living God, for the crown of their head to the soles of their feet, let your power touch. Wrap them with your mantle right now. The flames of your spirit, the mantle of protection against darkness, protection against darkness, against any kind of oppression. Let your power touch. And everyone in the congregation whose destiny has been under attack. I see the Lord causing out of your belly. I see streams of water flowing out of the spirits of people here. I see streams of water flowing. Something is happening here. There's a lot of things in your life that happened either you're on the floor or you are standing the hand of the lord is upon you just know just know that the hand of the lord is upon you it's an atmosphere that no human can escape lord i decree out of their belly i call for the rivers of waters of your spirit out of their belly i call for rivers of water of your spirit you said to me you have given me the key of david that whatever i shot shall be shot i shut down the negative energy 
energy coming out of their lives i shut it down you say whatever i open shall be open i open up the energy of everlasting life the power of god Ooh. whatever is generating a negative energy that is killing them i shut it down i command the everlasting life of god to break forth 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 right now to break forth right now to break forth in the name of jesus Rekala mosetele koyo baba baba, raba baba kada likala brashata lia. Let everlasting life begin to break forth. Let everlasting life begin to break forth in your life. Let it begin to break forth within your system. Let it begin to break forth within your system. Let it begin to break forth. Let everlasting life begin. Everyone, lift up your voice and pray in the Holy Ghost if you can. Pray in the spirit. Pray in tongues if you can't. If you can't pray in tongues, just declare, let your mantle remain upon my life and smash everything out of my belly. Shall flow rivers of water. I shall tread upon serpents and scorpions. Nothing shall by any means hurt me. Open your mouth and pray and declare. Rabba satali kala mosetalia. Reba baba baba kadali kolobrosetalia. God is transforming your nature. It's transforming your life right now. Something new is entering. The regalia that you need to function in this new era is coming upon you. Dimensions of grace. Dimensions of grace. Dimensions of grace are your portion. Dimensions of grace are your portion. Likali Mosetili Basatala. Dimensions of grace are your portion. Lift up your voice. Dimensions of grace are your portion. Either you are standing or you are on the floor, the power of God is still upon you. Dimensions of grace are resting on you right now. You have been marked by the Holy Ghost. The favor of God is upon your life. Whatever is dying in your life, in the name of Jesus, we command, let it come back to life. The spirit of life is upon you. The spirit of life is upon you. I break the yoke from you. I release the angels of the Lord to deliver you from every oppression of darkness. To wrestle you out of the grip of the devil. To bring you out of the grip of negative energies. In the name of Jesus. Let the angel of the Lord form the atmosphere of your life. Of your dwelling. That wherever you go. The Lord alone will be glorified. In Jesus' name. Help me go on to the mic for me, the three of you. We need to sing, go under the mic for me. We need to sing while under the mic. We need to sing while me under the mic. Makali Bosatele Maya Baba Baba. G. E. Is on. Come on, let's sing it. G. You are my savior. Let me add the trumpet. G Jesus. Everyone lift your voice. Let's sing that song. You are redeemer.
God of wonders beyond a galaxy. from God right now. I need a divine protection from God. Whatever you are, lift up your two hands. If you feel in your spirit with what I'm going through in my life, I need the mantle to protect me. I need the protection of the Lord. Lift up your two hands wherever you are. Holy Spirit, I bring these precious souls before you. The heritage of divine protection in your precious blood. Let it be released upon everyone right now. That whatever is a threat, whatever is a threat, whatever is a threat, Give them the power to nullify it. To neutralize the threat. In the name of Jesus. I decree any weapon formed against them shall not prosper. Let your destroyer respond to every destroyer. Let your destroyers respond to every destroyer. In their lives in the name of Jesus. Thank you Father for your faithfulness. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. You may have your seat. If you can be seated. We are going to the second word immediately. The truth about ancestral roots and spirits. The healing power of God is still flowing. The presence of the Lord is still working in your life. You are my dwelling place, my tower of strength, and at your throne of grace I humbly bow. My affection I pour out, my eyes release on tears as I behold. Beauty of the Lord. You are my dwelling place, my tower of strength, and out is your throne of grace. I humbly bow. My affection, my affection, I pour. Thank you. 
Carefully, don't just rush and come here for prayers. If you have dedicated your business or your place of work or the money you earn, if you have dedicated it to the Lord, if you have told the Lord, I am your own, this business is for your work, or you have ever told the Lord, I am your own, this job I am doing, whatever comes out from it. It's for your work to be done. Come to the front. I need to pray for you. He's with me always. He's with me your time. He's my loving friend. My savior all the time. He's with me always. He's with me on time. Is my loving friend, my savior all the time. You are with me always. You are with me all time. You are my loving friend, my savior all the time. You are with me always. You are with me all time. You are my loving friend, my savior all the time. Oh, to Jesus I surrender. Oh, to Him I freely give. I Love and trust in His presence, daily. I surrender. I surrender. Recolor. 
yourself or lying to the spirit. If you have not done that before, I hope you are not receiving this prayer because it's not going to help you. Among you, those of you who have covenanted your resources for this mandate, I hope you are also among those who are standing here. Holy Spirit, I command financial prosperity upon everyone right now. Take it in the name of Jesus. Let it begin to pursue you. Let it begin to pursue you. Let it begin to pursue you. Let financial prosperity I command it to pursue everyone who have dedicated their business their work for this mandate for the, for your kingdom to protect your redemptive plans and purposes let the financial prosperity pursue them i decree for a financial circumcision that would take them from the dimension they are right now to a higher financial dimension in the name of jesus I speak into your business. I speak into your financial life. Be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree that abundance will be your portion. Toiling will not be your portion. Supernatural favor will be your portion. Amen. Let the peace of God that generate prosperity wrap you like a mantle, 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 like a mantle. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Stretch forth your hands towards me, every one of you. I prophesy upon these hands. It shall bring forth resources Amen. for the kingdom of God Amen. and for your personal needs. Amen. It shall bring forth resources. I speak power upon those hands. I speak power and prosperity. Favor upon those hands. Favor upon those hands. I pronounce the hands blessed beyond reproach. I pronounce the hands blessed Bless beyond reproach. I decree that whatever those hands do shall prosper. Whatever is in the will of God shall prosper. In the name of Jesus, those hands shall count money. Those hands shall receive hefty checks. Those hands shall receive great relationships. In the name of Jesus, barriers around your business, I break. I, Lord, I decree, assign angelic helping hands to every business represented here to every job represented here in the name of jesus i decree for as many that covenanted for the heritage in the name of jesus the heritage of kingdom world let it rest upon you. Amen. That whatever you have determined to give to the Lord, you will have much more. Amen. 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 In the name of Jesus, that as it comes out of you, something will leave heaven to you. As it comes out of you, something will leave heaven to you. As it comes out of you, something will leave heaven to you. In the name Jesus receive the financial circumcision 
for greater resources. Receive the financial circumcision for greater resources in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can go back to your seat. You are holy. Holy. Are you Lord God Almighty? What is the Lord? What is the Lord? You are holy.
begin to pray for a special touch as we step into this session. Open your mouth and pray. ancestral root in Christ. Open your mouth and pray. Help me to find my ancestral roots in Christ and uproot me from every other root that I may have planted myself, that I may have been planted into. Help me find my ancestral roots in Christ and uproot me from every other root. me from every other route. Uproot me from every other route. Help me find my ancestral roots. So, Father, I decree that the blessing of this world will accompany everyone, will fall upon everyone that we hear this word today. In Jesus' name we pray. May I have your seat. Hallelujah. Please, I want to, this outside what I want to teach, I want to give you a prophetic instruction 
you can take it down as a note when you maybe during the prayer session of to, of this second session or when you go home do what I want to tell you but before you do listen to why I want to tell you be very very careful when you dedicate yourself as a son or daughter of a man of God be very careful are you understanding because if you do that to the wrong man they will claim for your soul in the place of warfare when I was praying for some of you I saw your spiritual fathers you adopted before confronting me in the spirit leave her is my daughter Levi is my son. And I have to respond. They belong to Jesus. I never knew. It's just today I'm doing unknown. I never knew this spiritual father, spiritual son thing can put people into bondage in the realm of the spirit if the people are not of God. You hear voices in the realm of the spirit telling me. You, I, I saw them. They appear. You know, those spirits they worship carry their image because the demons don't have their own image. They carry the image of the people. This is very serious. So what I wanted to write is this. I denounce any fathering that is not from the throne of God. Any spiritual fathering or mothering that I handed over myself to, I re denounce it. I reject myself. I, re I denounce it and I break free from it. I'm going to pray maybe after, maybe during the prayer session of this moment. Or, if I, if I, whenever we go into a prayer session, make sure you pray that prayer. Do, do you understand me? You have to obtain your liberty. I saw it in the spirit. It's not a joke. I saw it in the spirit. One came. He is my daughter. Stay off. I mean, I remember as we pray, stay off. I said, no. It belongs to Jesus. He's a daughter of Jesus. That's all this spiritual for that spiritual something. Be very careful. It's an initiation. They give you things, give you things you take, you took, you that's how some of them people I remember no no wonder people will call me and say, I want to be your spiritual daughter. What do I do? What were you supposed to do? Is it oh, do they do anything? There's nothing. But you ask some people, they will tell you, Oh, you have to come with a man of God, he will serve you holy communion, then you sow a seed. That is initiation. He will come and ask you to do certain things as a daughter and you call him my daughter, my father and all of that stuff. You enter into a demonic bondage that will require somebody to stand in the gap to negotiate for your destiny for you to come out. If you don't have such a person, you just suffer for nothing. Thank God for today. Thank God for this week. I wish there was strength. We do this kind of meeting every week self, because it, it, it exposed so many things and put so many things in place in the life of people. And those of you who have not been coming, you're on your own. Because yesterday I announced that only those who attend the meetings will get my attention in the day of adversity. You that stay at home and folded your leg, do you think that you will call me in the day of trouble and I will respond to you? I won't because I've already responded this week by gathering the whole church, teach them for eight days. You, you stay at home as executive VIP. I am living in uh, Mombasa. Or wherever you are living, distance is not a barrier if you are looking for God, my friend. Because you don't know what is pursuing, that's why you are not pursuing God. If you know what is pursuing, you will pursue God. We have people who flew in to attend. You, you are just within. I want to teach you a mystery today that I may teach for four hours. Are you ready? Promise me that you're not going to behave like a lizard. If I see you, you will get up. Or you, you get my point? Or we keep some water around, we pour it on your head. I want to lay to rest by God's mercy under God. We are bringing an expose on these issues of ancestral root and ancestral spirit. I'm going to do a lot of demonstration of truth here that is going to help you not to forget Let's begin the journey. This
this box is for the diabolic. What's wrong with this mic? This mic is seasoned. Can you come and work on this thing? If you have new batteries, bring it quickly and get me another microphone. This box is a diabolic. This box is the divine. This one here is just for content. Things that we are going to see. Hallelujah. Can you reduce the volume of this? I will take you through a journey. I will be slow at some point so that you understand me thoroughly. Son of man, I say reduce the volume of this one in the front here. Look at Genesis chapter 1. Can we open that place quickly? Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And I want to appeal, if you're a member of this ministry, you better stay and hear the whole teaching. Except you are rushing for jobs, fine. But if you are not, please sit down and hear all this for your own good. Do you hear what I'm saying? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. And darkness was on the face of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Do you see two dimensions there? There's a dimension of darkness, the diabolic. And there's a dimension of the spirit of the Lord, the divine, on the same place. That formed the root of whatever we are seeing on earth today. You belong to either the diabolic or the divine. Any, everybody on earth. They belong to either the diabolic. The word diabolic is that which have the characteristics of Satan in it. That which is demonic and satanic rooted in darkness. Are you understanding me? So today you are going to realize how, why maybe some of you will be angry at the kind of money you have spent as sacrifice to be free from ancestral spirit. How many of you have ever spent money for ancestral spirit? Give you some offerings. Let me see your hand up. So I will count it. Let's, if we add all the money, it should go up to a million million. <laughs> you will realize that nobody can be free from those nonsense if there exists through giving of money to prophets. Following them to the village or then following to your own village. I want to show you the truth about these things. There's the diabolic, there's the divine. Say it. On the face of the earth. What is under the diabolic? Will always experience what happens in the diabolic. Either they are praying, they are fasting, or not. What is divine will always experience what is divine. Either they fast or not. A monkey does not need prayer to be a monkey. Is it? No. Now, let's begin with the content. Before then, go to 1 John chapter 5. Let's see a clear definition of the divine. 1 John chapter 5. The Bible is superior. Sorry, 1 John chapter 1, not chapter 5, chapter 1. The Bible is superior to any other person's reasoning. Do you believe that? It is God's perspective given to man. It has no error. It has no mistake. 
Because God does not make mistakes. Even mistakes in God are no mistakes. How many of you know that? First John chapter 1 verse 5. This is the message which we have heard from him. And declare to you that what? Hello, lift up your voice and read. That what? That God is light and in him is no darkness at all. So when you see anything that has darkness, it's not God. Hmm? God is what? Light. If it is divine, it cannot be demonic. And if it is diabolic, it cannot be divine. No two ways about it. And what is diabolic will always share in the heritage of the diabolic. And what is divine will share in the heritage of divine. The question nine is, where are you rooted? The spirit of the diabolic is, is the antichrist. The spirit of the divine is the Holy Ghost. Do you understand me? The spirit of the diabolic is the antichrist. The spirit of the divine is the Holy Ghost. If you want to use Bible terms, the spirit of the diabolic is Baal. The diabolic has its own heritage and the divine also has its own heritage. Everybody is sharing one of these heritage. So long as you are a human being. So let's begin checking the content. We're trying to go to an expose of these things. Let's begin with the first word, seed. Seed. Matthew chapter 13. I hold not the rock, but the rock holds me. The rock holds me. The rock holds me. I hold not the rock, but the rock holds me. I'm standing on the rock of God. Matthew 13 verse 1. On the same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the sea. And great multitude were gathered together to him, so that he got into a boat and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. Then he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places, where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up, because they had no depth of the earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root... With that, may you not be ruthless. And some fell among tongues, and the tongues sprang up and choked them. But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop some a hundred, some sixty, some thirty. He who has an ear, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. What are the ears to hear? So, so, so those who have ears to hear now came to you and say. Must explain to us this stuff. What do you mean? Verse 24. He explained that, but that's not where I'm going. Verse 24. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like what? A man who sowed good seeds. So under the divine, the seeds are good. Do you understand me? The seeds are what? Good. So he sows good seeds in his field. But when men slept, his enemy came and sowed tars among the wheat and went his ways. So there is also the diabolic. The diabolic also has seed. The seed are called tars. So the good seeds are called what? Wheat. I'm taking you through a revelation. You know, when God wants to reveal something to you, begin precept upon precept. You get my point? Eh? Hello? So, it means, okay, let's finish up. Let's finish it up. It says, 
But when the grain sp- had sprouted, verse 20 says, and produced a crop, then the task also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, do you not sow good seeds in your field? How then does it have tars? He said to them, an enemy has done this. The servant said to him, do you want us to, then to go and gather them up? Do you know that they were talking about people? Talk to me. And the seeds are us, hum- humanity on the face of earth. The owner of the field is God himself. The enemy is the devil. When we say seed, you understand later, it's much more than what we think. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Look at what he said in verse 29. But he said, no, least while you gather up the tears, you also put the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, fight gather together the tears and bind them into bondage to bond them. But, rather, but gather the wheat into my barn. Remember, I've, we have explained this revelation before. Hello. But I went it just to pick this. When he said, let them grow together, he did not say let them mingle together. Do you understand? Let them grow, let them remain on the same planet Earth until the time of the harvest. Now, the first truth we must understand as we begin to check our ancestral roots. What we are doing now, we are checking our ancestral roots now. Are you understanding me? We are checking our ancestral roots um, as, as human beings on Earth. Then the root will help us understand the spirit. Do you, do you understand me? So tell your neighbor, I'm checking my ancestral roots right now. Praise God. <laughs> you know, we have been conditioned by our mindset and we take our father's house as our ancestral root. But let the Bible answer us. Do you understand my point? Some of you, by just listening, we are going to hit certain revelation and blessings that have been held back because you never knew will hit you. I'm not joking. Blessings that have been held back because you, you never knew. You never knew. Knowledge opened gates in the spirit realm. So because it, it will just hit you. Are you understanding me? So we are checking our ancestral root. The word ancestral root it begins from the word seed. The seed is the seed that determines the root. The seed determines what? The root. Okay. The diabolic seeds, seeds under the diabolic are tears, seeds under the divine are wheat. Now, one of the characteristics of the seeds under the diabolic system on earth. Let me say the ancestors under the diabolic system on it. What is the characteristics of the life of their seed or children or lineage? Let's go back to that scripture I never read in the first session, Colossians chapter 3. Because it's the Bible that is showing us things, so be ready to open the Bible. Is that not? Colossians chapter 3. Oh, I did not bring my amplified version. It's okay. It says, If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are what? Above. Where Christ is seated at the right hand. So, people, the wheat, the heart of the wheat is in things above. Where Christ is seated. Are you, are you understanding what I'm saying? Look at verse 2. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth or things beneath. So, the heart of tears is always on things beneath. Let me use the word the earth. The future. It's always buried in the seed. Your future is in your seed, your children, and all of that stuff. Now, after you consider seed, what comes to mind is spirit nature. So the next thing we consider is spirit nature. Number two. 
Number one, seed. Number two, spirit, nature. The spirit nature of the diabolic, the diabolic lineage is normally the flesh. Flesh driven. Old sinful nature. That's what it is. While the spirit nature of the divine is spirit driven. Divine nature. Are you understanding me? Look at the book of Second Thessalonians chapter two. Okay. Have you opened it? Can you read from verse seven? Second Thessalonians chapter two. From verse 7. Have you seen it? One to go. Read it. For the mystery of lawlessness. Yes. Now, now, now. That means, that means the spirit nature of the diabolic is ruled by the mystery of what? lawlessness that automatically tells us that the spirit nature of the divine is ruled by the mystery of come on you are not talking of godliness now keep reading you are in verse 8 And destroy the brightness of his coming. Verse 9. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan. With all power, signs, and lying wonders. Stop there. Now, the mystery of, this mystery of lawlessness also produces miracles. Whenever somebody visits a witch doctor for any solution, that person has gone to tap into the mystery of lawlessness. That brings miracles, signs. He said, the coming of the lawless one is according to all powers. Is that not? Signs and lying wonders. So whoever visits a witch doctor has tapped into the mystery of lawlessness. Certain villages, families, their ancestral root, natural ancestral root, just from the one I'm talking. They are in innocent blood that were shed and all kinds of things that were done and the reason why they did those things is to get certain solutions to certain problems we know cities where virgins were buried when the cities were being built i mean in africa we know cities families that uh, People with hunchback were looked for, sought after and they buried like seven of them for the sake of the power that the family was looking for. So those things, people call them ancestral roots. Do you understand me? Hello? People call them what? Ancestral roots. Now, the people go to seek those powers because of the mystery of lawlessness that, and it, it now led to idolatry. People don't go to the devil for nothing. They go there for power. Do you understand me? Now look at the problem we are having. We have used our mind and limited our ancestral roots to, to those our fathers that touch demons, worship them, and tap into the dimension of the mystery of lawlessness and unlock certain things into the household that have remained from generation to generation because Satan is a faithful oppressor. 
the, when people make a covenant with unclean spirit and the next generation break it, the spirit will move against them. I have seen people who die because of that. But what is the problem here? We are so powerful in the spirit that where we tune our mind to becomes a gate that opens up events, spiritual events in our lives. Let me repeat. We are so powerful, we human beings, that wherever we tune our minds to becomes a gate where so many things can be ushered into our lives. So if I be, if, let's say I remember my great, 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 great grandfather and uh, I, I was told that our great, great grandparents were mighty men of the value of the devil. You get my point? And these are guys that could turn into a lot of stuff that they want to turn into. I don't know about the human sacrifice. I don't think they did it in my village. But they really touched the demonic. Now, and somebody now come to tell me that those are your ancestors and you are not married because of them. You are suffering because of them. The Bible says God will visit the iniquity of the fathers to the fourth generation. You now begin to count generation one, generation two, generation three. If we are to even judge it by that, we forget that God also told the Israelites, I will bless you to a thousand generations. So if it's going to cost me in the fourth generation and it's going to bless me in a thousand generations, which one should I think about? But I'm not even talking about that. We are looking at this stuff. So they tap into the mystery of lawlessness, unlock all powers because they wanted protection. They wanted healing. They wanted their crops to yield. And you now take them to be your ancestors. But you forgot that before them, there was life. Do you understand me? But because you've been told they are your ancestors and you now tune your mind to those ones and now say, it's true. I am not married because of them. It's true. I have, there are ancestral spirits that will not let me progress in life. And you are referring to the spirits of your biological lineage. But the Bible says it is appointed unto man to die once after that judgment. So long as the rule of God, God is concerned, as they close their eyes in there, they are either in hell or heaven, they don't parade back to the earth. Listen! Those of you who believe that people can die and they begin to parade and visit you in their house, stop accepting demons into your house. Anybody who dies and leaves the earth, be it man of God or man of Satan, they cannot come back here again. They, they, I, wish, I wish I can show you the eight dimensions that does not let that happen but i can't i can't show you today the eight dimensions that does not let that kind of nonsense happen once the person's spirit leaves the body and he go away from this dimension called the earth he will no longer come back if you want to try go and stand before trailer and see if your if, it, if a trailer will not knock your spirit leave your body and you go away even when you are saying we can't you just go away forever and they say the person has died so all this nonsense people say oh hey, my my super person died he appeared to me in the dream and he said i should not cry again shut up if he can appear to you in the dream then if he's in hell he will leave hell and come back do you know how hot hell is if they can come back, all of them will jump out of hell and come back home and say, thank you. Thank you, Lord. They will now begin to look for church. Where is that church? Where is that church? Hell is hot. We've seen it. Are you understanding me? But they can't return. Even the story of Abraham and the rich man. Remember, the rich man said to uh, uh, Abraham, send Lazarus to come back to the earth to warn my brother. What does he say? He said, it is not possible. Why do we have such a Bible in our hands and we are believing lies that people who have died and now visiting us are even praying for us? Do you understand me? Crazy lies. How can you have the Bible in your hand and you are behaving like a fool? It's because you don't read it. So, if you say your ancestors are responsible for your problem, it's because you have tuned your mindset to tell me mind, mind. set say again mind, mind. set yes. now write it on your book write mind first 
then you write set. Have you written? Mind set. It means you tune your mind until it's set on something. You tuned it over the years. You sat down over under that ignorant charlatan preacher and you listen to them and say, Ancestor, 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 ancestor. Until you tune your mind to a show. You know, say, I'm suffering because of my ancestors. I'm going to go around and looking for prayers. Come and deliver me from ancestral spirit. My ancestral roots are responsible for my problem. Listen carefully. We are going somewhere today. So the spirit nature of the diabolic is the mystery of lawlessness. The spirit nature of the divine is what? The mystery of godliness. The mystery of godliness. Now, let's go to the next content I want to bring to us. The word, the next thing I want to bring on this content table is Father. So, me, Father. The word Father means source. So, why is this thing season? The word Father means source. The seeds of the diabolic, the seeds of the diabolic are called tears. The spirit nature of the diabolic of the diabolic is the spirit of is a mystery of lawlessness. The, the seed of the divine is called wheat. The spirit nature of the divine is the mystery of godliness. The father of the diabolic. Genesis. Sorry. John chapter 8. Is it that I need to move this to the front? Because I don't like the mic season in that place. Can we have some guys? Come. Come and help me. Let's move this to the front. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Now I'm going to cover the face of the choir. They have to see me in the realm of the spirit. It's okay. Let me just shift this a bit. Hallelujah. Make use of the screen, please. Now, maybe we'll try and put one screen this way so that the choir can have something to be looking like. It. Or we we'll look for something and drop it like this. Let's see what happens. Now, listen carefully. John chapter 8. Are you all there? How many of you believe in Jesus? Okay. John chapter 8, verse 44. Do you doubt what Jesus said? Do you believe what he says? What he says, is it final? Is it the truth? Is it beyond argument? Good. John chapter 8, verse 42. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. That means there are two fathers. Do you, do you understand me? That's what it just means. And who you listen to determines who is your father. He went on to say, Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are of your father, the devil. So the diabolic has the devil of their father. Do you understand me? We are tracing some roots here. The diabolic has the devil as their father. Look at what he went on to say. He went on to say, and the desires of your father you want to do. So me desires. It is your father that determines your desires. Do you see it now? He now said, he was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there's no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources for he is a liar and the father of it. So, on the father of the diabolic, of the generation of the diabolic is the devil. Do you understand me? That goes on to say, we don't need to check any other thing, that the father of the divine is who? God. God the father. 
God the Father. Hallelujah. Are you understanding the sense? Now, having understood fathering, fatherhood, I want you to go into the next world. I told you last week or two weeks ago when I was speaking, is it last week? That when you see the word father, it reveals there's a heritage. So that also tells us there's a heritage of the diabolic. Number four, heritage. The heritage of the diabolic is what causes. The heritage of the divine is blessings. If you are struggling with causes, you don't need to break them. Change your heritage. Change the heritage. If you are under the diabolic, walk away and come to the divine and causes will no longer speak in your life. You don't need to attend a cost breaking service. It's a deceit just to collect money from your hand. You just need to attend a translation service where you move from the diabolic that which had the characteristics of Satan and you move to the divine. Straight. There are not two ways about it. Do you understand what I'm saying here? So anybody trying to do any cost breaking in your life that you're just collecting money, asking you to go and pray, asking you to go and fast. The reason why the cost is speaking is because you are under the diabolic. So asking you to pray, asking you to fast, you are fasting, you are praying, you are giving, but you are still under the same system. The diabolical system, that is where you are. So no matter what you give, that's why you see, there's always a relief. After a while, the things begin again. Then you change pastors. You change churches. You see, the worst thing that happened to the body of Christ is the raising of false prophets. One of the worst things. So, the heritage causes God blessings. Do you understand how we are going this journey? Okay, now. Let's move to the next content. Assemblies. Spiritual assemblies. That is the next thing. Go to Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. Revelation 2, 9. Let's read from 2, 8. And to the angel of the church in Smyrna, write, This thing says the first and the last, who was dead and come alive. I know your works, tribulation and poverty but you are rich. I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. The word synagogue means assembly. So, we have two assemblies. The assembly under the diabolical system is called synagogue of Satan. Are you understanding me? Why the assembly under the divine system is called church of the living God? Are you understanding me? Now, that means if you are part of the synagogue of Satan, curses will be your portion, devil will be your father, mystery of lawlessness will be the one giving you miracle, you will be a tar and not a wheat. So your destiny when you die, will be fire. Even on earth, there will be the fire of oppression. Now, if you belong to the divine system, you have the church of the living God as of, as of the assembly you belong to. Then, the heritage in your life will be blessings. Your father will be God the father. And if God the Father is your father, you have a relationship with God the Son. And God the Spirit will live in you. Then the mystery 
that will be governing your life will be the mystery of godliness. You will be a wheat and not a tar. And you will not be of this world. So when you close your eyes in death, heaven will be your home. So everybody on earth, either in the church or outside the church, belong to either the diabolical system or the divine system. And this is what determines what happens in your life, not your ancestors. I'm coming. We are still very far. There are, things, there are a lot of things we have not touched. But so far, so good. Have you understood? You know, Jesus will teach in the Bible. I said, do you understand? So let me ask, do you understand? So far, so good. Do you understand? So when things are wrong in your life that have defied prayer, defied your expertise, defy your training, you went to school, you read very well, and you are employed, and you are working, but you cannot tell where the money is going. Or you are due for marriage, it's not forthcoming, or you have gone through a lot of demonic stuff, and they say it's ancestral spirit or ancestral world. Please check your seed, check your spirit nature, check your father, check your heritage, check your spiritual assembly. If you can check it, then you now determine are you under the diabolic or the divine? The answer to your problems will come out. Stop listening to prophets of liars because this book is more authentic than any prophet on it. Are you understanding what I'm saying? You see, with this, this, I'm showing you the revelation that hit me in the late 90s that I did not, I have not in my life prayed against ancestral anything. You can ask my younger sisters. You can ask those who grew with me. I have never, when I saw this, neither have I even preached it. Since, since you have been hearing me preach, have you ever heard me talk about ancestral nonsense? That we must be free from ancestral attacks. Is that have you ever heard me? Because I know these things. So today I'm delivering to you what has kept me for over 30 years. From all this nonsense. That's why when I see preachers using ancestral that to collect money from people, or they preach it, I feel so sad in my spirit that these guys are destroying the lives of men. They are making people, they are tuning their mind to set on ancestors. That's why it's called mindset. They tune your mind with a lot of facts and figures. They bring a lot of facts about your life and bring what they call testimonies, cooked testimonies, and all of that stuff. And tune your mind to set on ancestors or ancestral spirit to be the reason for your backwardness. Look at Africa, how backward it is. Do you want to say that the West don't have ancestors? Why are they forward and we are backward? Because we blame what is not the problem. Do you understand what I'm saying? And because you are blaming somebody who is dead, so he's not, he, not there to defend himself. You cannot understand why it says God needs to release those old men who have died to just come to church. Once, one pe- enter churches like this. And the man say, In my ancestor, your grandfather would just appear for and give you a slap and go back and say, I'm not responsible for your problems. <laughs> so, Look at the next content. Number six, household. Households. Without beating about the bush, when we say households, how many households do we have? We have the household of God and we have the household of the evil one but let me take you deeper let's look at these things naturally do you understand me let's look at them naturally please remove your religiosity out of number six take away your spirituality out of number six let's go natural because let's just go natural Households. Let's begin with a household that was first created Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. In that generation, there was no diabolic, there was just divine. So when Adam was created, he, he and Eve, and we know the story how they lost their place in the garden and they left the garden there was one day i was teaching about marriage and i said one of the greatest tragedy that happened to the human race was to start bearing children outside the garden so cain was born abel was born 
And from the antecedents and the stories of Genesis chapter 4, it's clear that Cain became diabolic. Are you understanding me? Abel became what? Divine. How? Both of them went, were called to come and present sacrifice on the first day of God, which is Passover. In Passover, you give what equate to the Lamb of God that take away the sins of the world. So as a result, Abel brought that Lamb to God, but Cain brought crops, things you bring for either first fruit or Pentecost or so. That was what he brought. And God respected the offering of Abel and despised that of Cain. Are you understanding me? And Cain now felt offended. And instead of him to check himself and ask, why did God despise my offering? He just became offended. Offense is the way the flesh responds to rebukes. Right? It's going to help you. Offense Taking offense is the way the flesh responds to justify rebukes. Justified rebukes. Taking offense is the way the flesh responds to justified rebukes. Right? That bodily is going to help you. Taking offense is the way the flesh responds to justify rebukes. So, 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 when Cain took off offense, his journey to the spirit of hell began. His journey into the diabolic began. When you take offense, you have headed in a particular direction. Let me, let me check, check your neighbor. We have not even started. We have three hours more. You are looking like this. Tell your neighbor, there's, there's three hours. And three is the number of God. It's the number of Christ, sorry. Resurrection. So when I take offense, I'm on my way to the diabolic. Taking offense results in hate, results in bitterness. You get my point? It results to a whole lot of stuff. And before you know, somebody is heading towards the diabolic. So Cain was heading towards the diabolic. And he not, uh, God not told him, look, sin is lying at your door. When you take offense, you don't even value the voice of God again. You argue with it. You don't value with it. You get my point? So the voice of God came to him and said, sin is lying at your door. Thank God God was the one talking to him directly. If God had sent a prophet, that prophet would have suffered in the hands of Cain. Can you imagine God sent you to Cain that early money? You'll be the next to be killed. <laughs> but thank God there was no prophet. It was God himself that was speaking. And Cain could not see God physically to give him a slap. You get my point? It was just there boiling. And, and, and God said, they sin at your door. He, he said, it doesn't matter. And before you know it, he killed Abel. So when he killed Abel, the human system, apart from Adam, the human system that represents the divine was a race. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the dead of his saint rejoice you see the devil want to take the sense out because you know when we go out he become in charge but god will keep us here until we fulfill our days are you are you understanding me so abel was taken out completely when abel was taken out genesis chapter 4 that we read yesterday is it not what did he say god replaced abel with who said we are looking at natural things so are you understanding me natural things now let's go back to that scripture we read yesterday look chapter three you remember the one we saw this began that this began this look chapter three let's go there you will fulfill your destiny <laughs> in the name of jesus We're going to read just verse 36 down to the end. The son of Canaan, the son of Alphazad, the son of Shem, the son of Noah, the son of Lamech, the son of Methuselah, the son of Enoch, the son of Jared, the son of Mahalalel, the son of Canaan, the son of Enosh, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, the son of who? God. Wait. 
So households, naturally, bloodline. You get my point? Households. God, Adam, Seth, then the rest. Do you understand me? I wish we can, we can trace the root of Cain. But sadly speaking, the root of Cain was wiped away. We can't trace it now. It was wiped away with the flood. Completely. So the flood came and said, Cain, since you have removed Abel, you too, shoot. And God cleaned the earth. Removing this system. Can I tell you something? It is the human system that allowed the demonic to step into the human terrain. It is the human system that allowed the demon to step into the human terrain. So God needed to wipe away the human system completely. Now, when the human system was wiped away, and another generation began, which root made it to after the flood? This root. Because Noah germinated from Seth. Are you understanding me? So Noah germinated from Seth. So we can say from, from the fall of man to the day the flood came upon the earth, the human system that would have made it possible for us to keep sharing the heritage of the diabolic was wiped away with the flood. So God established a new system where no human being that would be born on earth will share in the heritage of the diabolic. And that system was the Noah system. So when Noah came on the earth, it was a relief for eternity. Now watch this. He now gave back to three sons. He came with three sons, sorry. And one of them now established another system. It was worse than that of Cain. What was his name? Ham. Now we know it wasn't really Ham that did it. Ham committed the sin. Noah caused the grandchild. Then the child of that grandchild now established the system. Nimrod. Are you understanding me? So the Nimrod system brought back idolatry, brought back the diabolic to the face of the earth. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So, God, who is all-knowing, understood that the lineage from the Nimrod system, okay, let's just be a little bit explicit. Ham, what's the name of that is child is it Canaan what's that his name is it Canaan how did you read your bible Canaan is that the one that Noah cost open to your bible now don't look at me like that you cannot hold the bible in your hand and you begin to guess we are not in a class if it's a class you will look at the textbook before you write <laughs> Where did Noah curse the child? Chapter 9. Canaan. So the name of that child is what? Do you not know where the Canaanites came from? So it's from the root of Canaan that we now have Nimrod. Do you understand me? So now, this was after the flood. Am I boring you? This was after the flood. Listen. God saw that anybody born on this line is going to struggle with the diabolic. And God began a fresh line on earth. And he found somebody that came through Noah. 
What's his name? Shem. We have Japhat also. Bible history has it that Shem was kept alive to the call of Abraham. He was the one that helped Abraham and his father to understand the call of God. If you read the Bible, there was a time that um, uh, even Isaac, was it Isaac? Okay, let me leave that. Shem lived so long, God kept him so long, so that he can bat a lineage that, don't need to, that will bring forth the divine. It, that is where the root continued until Abraham. So because of space, let's remove all this. Eh? And write Father A.B. Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. Can you read it for me, please? Now the Lord has said to Abraham, what? Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house. Why? His father's house, wait, was diabolic. From your father's house, go on to a land that I will show you. I will make you what? A great nation, I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you, and I will cause him who causes you, and in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Read that last statement again. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. One of the major things that was in the heart of God was to establish a fresh household. That will never share in any diabolic heritage. They will share in the divine heritage. Are you understanding me? That was why he called Abraham out. To establish that household. Now. What is the power. Of sharing a household. That flow. From the diabolic and how what is the deliverance system of god let's talk about the power first that takes us to number seven dimensions tell me dimensions Write this down. The ancestral root of darkness is the six dimensions of hell. The ancestral root of darkness is the six dimensions of hell. Why? Do not forget Cain. Are you understanding me? Read Genesis chapter 4 quickly, verse 16. Everyone read it. Genesis 4, 16. Open it quickly and read. Let me see. Genesis 4, 16. Wait, let's wait for the rest people. Are we all there now? Let's wait for the rest people so that we read together. Genesis 4, 16. Let's wait for the rest people. Are we all there now? Everyone read verse 16. Then Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and joined the land of Nod on the east of Eden. One more time. Then Cain went out. Now listen. The book of Proverbs says, Hell is before the Lord. If you walk away from the presence of God, you are living in hell. There's no vacancy in the spirit. There's a mystery you must understand about hell. Hell is a place. Hell is a spirit. Hell is a situation. I've taught you that before. So when Cain departed from the presence of the Lord, he took his entire lineage and brought them under the diabolic. Do you un understand me? 
You see, when a woman departs from God's presence, it's not as heavier as when a man departs. Do you know why the devil prefers men not to come to church? Because they are the ones that carry the heritage. They carry the genes. So the genes will be outside church. Look at our churches today. There are more women than men. Just because of that. Cain departed and the whole lineage was taken out. So the life of Cain shows us that the diabolic has its ancestral root in hell. The diabolic has its ancestral root in hell. Does it mean the real ancestral forces, therefore, is not the spirit of your grandparents? It is hell itself. This will help you where we are going. So, me the real ancestral spirit is not any demon in our family. It's hell itself. That's why when I hear pastors blame some spirit, I just say ignorance of fire. This is crazy. And you begin to battle spirits. Some of them are phantom. They are not real. Say again, the real ancestral root of every family under the diabolic system is hell itself. That is the spirit. It's hell. That's why you cannot cast it out. Every ancestral spirit in this house will bind you. Amen. We are just making noise. You don't cast hell out. You walk away from it. You walk away. You walk away from it. You don't cast it out. Do you understand me? Now, there are six dimensions of hell. There are six dimensions of hell. Should we run through them? Listen, before we go into I want to request that God should just help us to live our Christian lives. So when we die, we don't go to hell. Because these are the things that will happen that I want to show. There are six dimensions in hell. Six. Sadly speaking, people who are under the diabolical system face these ones here on earth. Now, as we look at the dimensions, you will now realize some of the things that they happened, you will now realize why they are happening in people's lives. The first dimension of hell is in the book of Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13, verse 49. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come forth, separate the wicked from among the just. And cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be willing and gnashing of teeth. That's the first dimension of hell. Willing and gnashing of teeth. It is called physical suffering. A spiritual torment. Sorry, conscious suffering, not physical. Conscious suffering. Conscious. You hear statements like, oh, let me just die um, and rest from these problems. He, he ignore. Eh, eh, somebody has been sick of cancer. The person finally died. Eh, she has gone to rest. Even Christian makes a stupid statement. And the person you are talking about didn't know God. 
and she has, and you know, the pain has been too much. She has been in that pain, so she has not gone to rest. Rest where? How? You see, when we Christians make so stupid statements, we don't know what we are spreading. We are spreading negative energy around us. That's why the lost will not get saved. Those who are in the same state will not repent. They also follow that one. The devil have so programmed the human race that it is like the next person jump into hell, the next one jump into hell. You, you, people cannot learn lesson for the one who have gone so that they will not go. People keep going in succession. The first dimension of hell that hit anybody who go there is conscious suffering. The pain is worse than cancer. Are you understanding me? There was a man who was having a lot of pains, an old man. He was a, he was a pilot. So he, he retired. His wife has been on his case for over 20 years that he should give his life to Christ. And because of his prosperity, he felt the wife was being stupid. You know, there are some people who think that Christianity is for the poor. He didn't mind himself. So at his old age, he was about 60 something, 70. Some disease began to emerge. There's this pain that always come. They have treated it, they have treated it. So they gave him painkillers. He, he's always on painkillers, always on painkillers. So there was this day, the pain was so much, he was in his, in his truck. He just parked the truck in the field. And got so tired of the pain that he, he now felt that, okay, the medication they gave him, I think the previous day, let him pack all of them and drink at once so that he can kill the pain. The guy packed the entire medication and took at once. I'm explaining his words. He said, <laughs> as soon as he took everything, he saw himself outside his truck. Outside. And he was walking towards his truck like this. He now looked. When he was outside, there was no pain again. It was, what has happened? This drug has worked. Why he was walking like this? Because when a man dies, his body is like glass. Sorry, not that it's glass. His body carry a reflection. Sorry, his spirit carry a reflection of the last clothes he wore when he died. But when the saints die, God wear us clothes. First Corinthians chapter 15 spoke about it. But when the lost die, they are naked in the spirit. So they carry a reflection of the last clothes they wore while they passed away. So he came out with that cloth. He thought, he never knew it was dead. He walked towards his car like this. And he saw himself on his stereo. Ah, me, me. They now down on him, he has died. In less than a second, two angels, sorry, not angel, a force soak him out of the earth. I wish I have time to talk to you about that. A force soak him out of the earth. So, the man said he was very conscious. There is no difference. The only difference that is not in his body, but he can feel, he can smell, he can do anything. He's, he, all his consciousness was intact. So, he saw himself flying into the sky, and he remember how he normally fly with plane. He was able to calculate the speed because he was a pilot. He went beyond the sky, passed through all day. He went out of the realm called the second heaven, and he found himself in a space, green grass, very greeny place, beautiful. That was the product of the wise prayer. Beautiful green grass. When he got there. Why he was still seeing how beautiful the place is, then the ground he stood began to open. The portal of hell he had been living on all his life began to open. Then three, sorry, yeah, two spirits came out of the ground and they were pulling him through hell. That when the portal came, the pain, the suffering that came into his body, he began to feel so much pain when the portal opened. And the two demons were now from there he knew that the disease was caused by one of the spirit he saw it the disease he struggled with so at that point he remembered the wife's
preaching. And now turn to God and say, Father, save me. If you will save me, I'm going to serve you. As soon as he said so, an angel appeared. Two, three angels appeared. Sorry, two. Two angels appeared. And they smiled at him. As soon as they appeared, the demons disappeared. No prayer. The demons disappeared. And they smiled at him. And they told him that God has given you another chance. As soon as they said so, he came back the same speed. Shh, into his body. And woke up. Hey. No disease. All the disease was gone. As I'm talking now, the guy is a preacher. An old preacher in the US. Everything disappeared. Now, my point is, he felt the pain of hell. The first dimension of hell is conscious suffering that cannot be erased. Now, when that dimension now comes to those whose ancestral roots are in hell, they experience a suffering here on earth that there are no words to explain. People will call them curses. People will give them different names. If they manifest in the area of finance, there will be problems. They manifest in the area of health. They manifest in the area of just general life. Pain will just be everywhere. That's the first dimension. Do we have people who are facing that dimension as we speak? The second dimension. Blackest darkness. Blackest darkness. That's the second dimension. Darkness that is dark. What did God do to Egypt? He allowed them to feel this one. You remember? When Moses was in Egypt. Three days and three nights darkness. How does this manifest? Look at what the Bible says in John, in Isaiah chapter 8. How does this blackest darkness manifest? When people are rooted in hell, that is what happened. Look at what the Bible says. Isaiah. It says, then they will look to the earth, verse 22, we have read it before, and see trouble and darkness, gloom of anguish, and they'll be driven into darkness. The manifestation is in verse 21. They will pass through it hard pressed and hungry. And it shall happen when they are hungry that they will be enraged and curse their king and curse their God. And look up. Verse 19. And when they say to you, seek those who are meters and wizards, who whisper and mutter. You know the people seek their God. She just seek the dead on behalf of the living. So when you touch unclean anointing, you share in the diabolic root of hell completely. The diabolical, root, the diabolical root is hell. So there is spirit, ancestral spirit in it, is hell. So that ancestral, ancestral spirit generates conscious pain to people here on earth. Two, it unleashes blackest darkness on them. And when that darkness comes on them, they have no interest for God at all. Economically, they go through a lot of pain. Have you seen somebody, the person is suffering terribly and he doesn't want to hear anything about Jesus? Talk to me. That is hell. They are, their ancestral spirit is not from their father's house. It's hell itself because of the system. It's the system that delivers you to the spirit. Write it down. The system delivers people to the spirit. The system delivers people to the spirit. It's not your father who gave back to you. It's the system. It's the system. Do you understand me? Not, not the biological root is the system that brings people to the spirit. So, so the, the, the diabolical system is what delivers people to what they call ancestral spirit. Hell is the real ancestral spirit because the system, the word ancestral is also a system. Do you get my point? That bad children from generation to generation so look at what Peter said in Second Peter chapter 2. You will realize, we'll get there. Salvation is so sweet. It's only escape. Hallelujah. Second Peter chapter, chapter 2. 
Look at how Peter described certain preachers. Verse 17. These are wells without water. Have you seen it? Clouds carried by a tempest. For whom is reserved what? The blackness of darkness forever. That is hell itself. Hell is so dark, there's no light. It's so dark. Those who have gone there will tell you that you only hear the voices of the next person in his own pit screaming out of the excruciating pain of being there. But you can't see because it's full of darkness. Do you know why? God is not in that realm. The darkness in hell, it is not just, it's not a, it's not just a physical darkness. It's a spiritual darkness, a f- complete display of the earth that was without form and void. Nobody can survive that. So when, when the system delivers such spirits to people, they begin to live in moral darkness. And it, the moral darkness will result in terrible economic hardship. The third dimension of hell. Abiding presence of the demonic powers. Abiding presence of demonic powers. That is a third dimension that this spirit, this system brings to people. When we, when we say abiding presence of demonic powers, we are talking about somebody who is always under spiritual attack. Always under spiritual attack. Are you being enlightened here? Always under spiritual attack. When you see somebody who is always under spiritual attack, so sometimes I even get tired of text messages. Thank God it's not coming from our members. You see, so you get weary. I remember when I was trying to read yesterday, I got halfway and I stopped. Because it was too sorrowful. If I begin to affect me. And I say, if I allow this to affect me, I will not be able to preach today. You get my point? Because the problems are too much. And what makes matter worse, they cannot even come where they will be safe. Some of them are very far. You see all kinds of... I, I, I remember one who wept and cried. And you, you feel so pity, so sorry, so sad about the whole situation she, this person is going through. And it's so true. It's so real. You can know that this is hell. This is the heritage of hell. This is the, what they call ancestral spirit. It's hell itself. This is hell dimension number three. Because she always tell you, there are some that is so bad that you can't sleep and while you are trying to put your head, a terrible nightmare will wake you up. And begin to breathe. You go back again to sleep. Another one wake you up. You are living in the presence of demons. They terrorize you when you sleep. When you are asleep, they blow into your brain. And you see a mighty python coming to swallow. And you wake up. Sweat will be everywhere. It's a satanic heritage. Because of the system you belong to. Some, if I had the time to talk to them, we go deep into discussions. You now find that they are so hooked onto the diabolical system that they can't come out. Until they come out, they can't be free from that. There are cases that you just pray an encouragement prayer. You know, it's not going to work. Because you know, by virtue of what you know, this thing does not go out by receive it. Is somebody hearing me? Very, I remember one. He was even telling me he want to send some money to me as a sacrifice because this thing is getting too much. I said, where in the Bible do you say that you have to send money to, to buy your deliverance? Hey, man, no God, I, I don't care. I don't care again. I said, me, I care. What if I collect your money and the demon transfer to me? Are you, are you understanding me? And I engaged the person into a system of unplugging from the diabolical. I sent over 60 messages to the person. What shocked me is even after one month, they have not downloaded it. And the system, the computer system sent me a message. They want to delete it. I said, delete it. Yeah, yeah. I don't pick such calls again. You're supposed to be, on, that is why when this, when when this heritage is responsible for your problem, please don't go seek for prayers. Look for a church. That is a grand and pillar of truth. And plant yourself there. Only truth can unplug you from the diabolical. Only truth can unplug you. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Do you know the meaning? The truth shall unplug you. 
Doesn't mean I shall set you free. Say with me the truth. Shall unblock me. I didn't hear you. Add more strength to that. Hey, me, I know some people are not talking. This crowd is talking as if we are only five people. Say, let me hear you. Until you are unblocked. Forget about deliverance. As you keep hearing the word, it gets into your spirit. Look at Psalm 1. This book of the Lord shall not depart out of it. May tell you day and day out. Is that not? Day in, he blesses he who does not sit in the council of the ungodly. Nor stand in the ways of sinners. Nor sit in the seat of discomfort. But his delight is where? In the law of the Lord. In his law he meditate day and night. And the thing begin to unplug him. Begin to unplug him. As he meditate day and night, they unplug him. He shall be like a tree. As soon as he's unplugged. Are you, are you understanding me? Nobody can stand this kind of torment too, where every day there's one demon. Every night, another one arrives. You are being free from one. Another one says, I'm coming. I'm just waiting for that one to finish and go. So I let me now arrive. It's my turn. And you are being tormented turn by, in turns by unclean spirit. You see? Thank God for rest too. Thank God for rest on every side. That will not be our portion. That remains is too weak. It will not be our portion. Because how can you do the work of God like that? You, 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 I mean, you can't do the work of God. Forget about it. You cannot even do your own work. You cannot even pray. You cannot fast. You get my point. You woke up in the morning, you hear one slap this side. And you told you didn't see the person. People have told me that's what happened to them. There was one who told me how she was lying on the bed and the first came and carried the bed. Physically, it wasn't spiritual. It, she, she said, breeze blew from the window. Ooh, like a movie. And then her bed go all oh, went up like this and get too close to the ceiling. And the first left it and the bed fell back. I asked her, was it in a movie? He said, no, it was in my house. People are suffering, no? You see why you are laughing? May you keep laughing in Jesus' name. Oh. May you keep enjoying yourself like this. Oh. May those things remain stories to you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> People are going through a lot, my friend. Abiding presence of demons everywhere. It doesn't because of the heritage. The system is responsible for the suffering. The system, not the father's house. The system. Is somebody hearing me? It's a system that is responsible. Look at what the Bible says in uh, Matthew chapter 12 concerning abiding presence of demonic powers. Matthew chapter 12, verse 43. Look at what it says. It says, When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest and finds none. Then he said, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. You see, one day I asked myself, what is wrong with this spirit? Why can't you leave this person alone? And I now realize that without a human body, they cannot express themselves on it. So they crave for human bodies so that they can have identity on earth. Are you understanding me? So look at this person. He thought he had been free. But the spirit came back with seven more. And the Bible says, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. So shall it, so shall it also be with this wicked generation. A generation that is not interested in Christ. They will always suffer this uh, Oppression from the spirit of hell. Number four, the fourth dimension of hell is the capture of the soul by the indwelling presence of sin. The capture of the soul by the indwelling presence of sin. Sin is living in everyone, but not everybody is living in sin. The Bible says, if you say you have no sin, you make God a liar. That means sin lives in every one of us. But not everyone is living in it. But under this kind of oppression, your, the soul of the person will be captured by the sin living within. And when that happened, you become dead in trespasses. Are you understanding me? Look at the book of uh, Romans chapter 6. What did the Bible say in Romans chapter 6? Verse 23, a common scripture. Let's read it. Let's just quote it. 
Romans 6 23. For the wages of sin is dead, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So when the soul becomes captured with the indwelling presence of sin, sorry, by the indwelling presence of sin, that person will never see sin in anything sinful they are doing. They will never see it as sinful. No matter how terrible it is. Have you ever seen people who does not see sin as sin? Those people are sharing in this heritage. They are in the diabolic system. And when you don't see sin as sin, you keep committing it. And you keep reaping from the wages. But when you now begin to wake up and you begin to realize that you are heading in a very bad place, what happened to Paul when he woke up could, be, could begin to happen to you? What happened to him? He said that what he never wanted to do, he found himself doing it. He said, who would deliver me from this body of death? When you start thinking that way, your liberation from hell has started. When you begin to realize that this is not good, but, but, but here is the way this thing operates. Even when you don't want to do it, you find yourself doing it. That is a sign that your soul has been captured. By, by hell. Is somebody hearing me? Now, the next dimension of hell is what the Bible calls woe. W-O-E. So we call it the woe dimension of hell. The word woe means judgment. People in hell, they go through judgment. So this dimension that is the root of, of uh, uh, darkness or the ancestral roots of darkness, this dimension brings sorrow to people. And I need to take you to the book of Revelation. If you read the book of Revelation, you realize that whenever a woe is made manifest, a disaster breaks out. Whenever a woe is released, a disaster breaks out. But let's look at Genesis, uh, sorry, Revelation chapter 6. Verse 3. When you open the second seal, how does this judgment manifest in the life of people? When somebody is under judgment, the person will not enjoy angelic ministration. The person will not enjoy the presence of God. Is somebody hearing me? Are you here? Now, the world dimension from the ancestral roots of darkness how does it express itself in the life of people on earth? Look at Revelation chapter 6 verse 3. When you open the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, come and see. Verse 4, another horse, fiery red. Remember, the first horse was white horse. Wearing a crown, that is in verse 2. That is the Antichrist. Now, the second horse, fiery red, went out and it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth. Do you see it? And that people should kill one another. And there, was, and there was given to him a great sword. Listen. When this uh, dimension of hell, the world dimension, if he's speaking in a family, they'll be killing themselves. Because of land, a family can level themselves on the face of the earth. You see brothers from the same womb sending assassins to themselves because of land. It's not really land, it's because of a war. Because they all are living under the diabolical system. It's not caused by their father's house. It's caused by the system they are living in. So this war is released. So the family is divided. No unity. If this one is succeeding, this one gets angry and, and meet a wind doctor to pull that one down. Except you are in Christ. This one is, 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 is succeeding in life. That one move against him. Ordinarily, family members are supposed to rejoice over each other's success. Because your success is my success. Is that not? But when this war is seated, they want everybody to suffer. You will get an admission and you will come home to tell your parents and tell your relatives, oh, the Lord has blessed me. I got an admission to so you okay, we shall see. It's not important to even, even pretend. I say, oh, we thank God. They will say, hmm? we shall see. 
And as soon as you leave, no school fees. Because they go and touch sorcery. Because of this horse that defied homes. Look at the next statement. When he opened the third seal, I heard the tall living creature saying, come and see. So I look and behold, a black horse. And he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hands. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, a quart of wheat for a denarii, and three quarts of belly for a denarius, and do not harm the oil and the wine. This is the horse of hunger. So, when there is a world dimension in the life of somebody, even when you have food, you cannot eat. Let me, let me explain this hunger. There is hunger where there is no food. There is hunger where there is food. You can't eat. Do you understand me? I'm not saying somebody who is fasting and all of that stuff. I have seen people killed by the hunger of their food they can't eat. They are not sick. Of, they can't eat. There is food they can't eat. Are you understanding me? Why some, they want to eat, there's no food. They, they have the ability to devour anything, even a whole goat. But there's no food. <laughs> Do we have that can kind of devour entire good? Do you have them in this house so that we give you some? <laughs> you know, some people, if they are hungry, they can eat an entire cow. <laughs> but you, you have capacity for it, but, but it does not exist. The spirit will make sure that there's no food. And look at the thing it does. It makes sure that you people eat miserable food. Miserable food. It, the, the spirit will not give you the inside for balanced diet. Even if you have PhD in health science. Have you ever seen people who went to school and they appear as if they didn't go, went to, they didn't go anywhere? Is this spirit? Are you understanding me? There are a lot of people that when they stand, they talk. You, you, you even thought that maybe they, they just they didn't go to any school. But I begin to tell you, oh, I'm a PhD or that must I say, aha, are you holding it? And it's not showing. <laughs> Do you understand me? <laughs> it, it's not showing. <laughs> the whole dimension can erase your glory. The glory of academics can be erased from your life to this world dimension. First prophet can throw it on you. This world dimension, you get my point? It makes even when there is treasure, you can enjoy your treasure. Are you are you understanding me? There was a man that has a lot of money that we used to live close by many years ago in Abuja, many many years ago, and we just came into the city not too long, and people were scarce. Abuja was scanty; there were no much people, and you see the man, he has. He will come back from, I think he was a contractor, the construction person. He come back with money like this, sit. The money used to be in his back, and he'll sit in the front of his house and hold it like this. You won't know his money. He will just come back like this. His wife will pass, who? The children will pass, who? They won't know there's anything there. And the, the, the children will come and say, Daddy, I am hungry. He will say, eh, Go and tell your mother. He has money. The mother will say, Go and tell your father. So the children will be, Go and tell your mother. Go and tell your father. <laughs> he doesn't buy even a shirt. Every night he will come back with the only two he remains and put his arm and remove his clothes and sit like that with no clothes, with just knicker and stay outside like this. Hold the, the back. We thought it was being a miser. We thought it was stingy. Until we realized it was a spiritual problem. A woe was on him. You will get it, you will not eat it. That is a woe. You will get the money, you will not eat it. Even your children cannot eat it. It's a woe that comes from the kind of unclean spirit. Are you understanding me? He doesn't have, that is a who He holds it. They will be hungry. Hmm? You hold the money. But when somebody comes looking for loan, he will give them. Thank God that they found Christ. And the Holy Spirit broke that nonsense from their life. Listen carefully. There's a lot of all kinds of suffering by reason of the Spirit. Are you understanding what I'm saying? And the Bible says in the next one, verse 7, and he opened the fourth seal, and I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, come and see. So I look and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was what? 
death and hate followed with him and power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with the sword with hunger with death and with the beast of the earth this war this war dimension when it speaks you see you see we are, have you ever heard of babies are born and animals enter inside to eat the babies that is a war it ought not to happen that is a war it's a war dimension when you see unusual things happening animals were not created to kill people when you see unusual things happening like that you know there is a heritage from hell the people belong to a system that has brought this dimension of hell into their lives the sixth dimension of hell i've given you five is that not the sixth dimension of hell the last one is a separation from God a separation from God are you understanding me that one separation from his presence separation from him eternally now if you look at those six dimensions of hell for God's sake, is there any destiny that can be fulfilled in that kind of an atmosphere? If you go and marry into that kind of a family, what will happen to you? Or someone from that family marry you, what will happen to you? Do you see why people are suffering? You sit on there, pastor, who is having that heritage, what will happen to you? Or a person who has that heritage now becomes the leader of your community. <laughs> what will happen to you? Or it's your best friend. Look at what I've realized. People under this heritage, even when they share the same bed with you, they leave a sorrow behind when they go home. I repeat, people of this heritage, of the sixth dimension of hell, even when they share the same bed with you, they visited your house. You call it night, there's a way they call it, sleepover. They sleep over your house. You will not pass over. One sleepover can cancel your destiny because they will leave things behind that you'll be battling with. They will leave things behind that you'll be battling with. You see, that is why it's good to live a life that has understanding of these things so that you will not use your own hand to bring things into your life. When you see somebody who share in this heritage, be hospitable but with caution even if you give them a cloth to wear don't collect it back because when they wear it you wear it something wear you you give them shoe they wear and after all oh, thank you for the shoe you gave me i've used it for the ceremony take tell the person i dash you wear it forever are you understand what i'm saying you see these things I'm sharing a lot of people don't know them I told you before that when we are living in peace of you don't see all this stuff attacking somebody because we have rules we are keeping because of these things we know so these are natural things that people who are trapped in the in, in the system they suffer it that's what the bible says a, a righteous man should choose his friend how carefully wisely you consider these things because you before you bring somebody to your home look at what guys that are rich do when a rich man builds his house there's a place called visitors room why keep all your heritage in that place even the toilet when i grew up i didn't know of things like that so I remember visiting somebody because there is this village mentality where because you people in your village everybody is everybody so you can visit this person you sleep on the bed this way the other one sleep cross his leg this way you just manage yourself 15 people on bed like this you cry. you first of all spend the whole night speaking your language tell all the stories and people begin to sleep one after the other while the stories are being shared 
So the last group will be two or three people, and they keep sharing, watch, keep talking. The right one is he's still talking. The right one has slept. He didn't know. When he now touched, oh, he has slept. Me too. Okay. Mm. <laughs> now, there is unity. There is everything. You now carry that mindset and come to the city. And you come like this with your back. <laughs> now, somebody will carry this heritage. Now come. You now remember the village mindset. I'm looking for what you say. No, what they just come. <laughs> it's only you. In those days, it was 15. And now one come. And now one come. You put another six. They now share your little bed. And you start discussion like that again. And everybody sleep. You don't need to do that for seven days before a demon drops in your life. You don't need to, before an affliction. You see, heritages like this are shared the way you carry cloth and give to people. They remain in your life. I want to ask you a question. Have you ever sent somebody who has a strong perfume? You and the person sit down and spoke, and the person left, and you still feel the fragrance around you. That's how it happens in the spirit. That's how it happens in the spirit. That is why God told them when you go to the cities and moving into, don't marry their daughters. Break everything, kill everything. Because by that, do you know that some people married from the, the nations God said they didn't marry? that they shouldn't marry. Why is God telling like It wasn't tribal sentiment. It was heritage. And the Bible says in, is it Ezra or Nehemiah? The men have to return both the wife and the children. Why? To protect the holy seed. That's how serious this matter is. So, you now, you came with your village mentality, you share the same shoe, Share the same uh, clothes, share the same pint, share the same bra, share the same. Of course, people are doing like that. I say, hey, you share. Because in your village, everybody share everything. You don't know that your life is diminishing because of sharing. The people, the wise man, they have visitors' room. So, I remember visiting a very rich man in Lagos. And I went. We, me, I didn't know visitors' room. We have, we grew up in three bedroom flat. Two, sorry. My dad has his, my dad and my mom have their own room. We, the children, have our own room. So we sleep, all of us there, and the sitting room is there. So I didn't know there was something called visitors' room. So I went to that house. So when I went, I was hoping to share bedroom with who. I don't know who. So when I got there, they greeted me and they took me to visitors' room. Thank God they are rich and the rooms alone, they are so beautiful. The toilet, that was the first toilet that before you, you have to look at it very well before you, because it's too clean for you to use it. Are you understand me? That was what I thought. So, but, but I was asking myself, what is the mindset of this? What is the reason of these things? Why is it that people have these ideas? Is to live a life that is separate. Do you understand me? To live a life because one, they don't know me. Let's say they know me, fine. But they don't know me. Why do we have hotels? Do you understand me? That partly because of some of those things. So I want you to understand these things. The people could even, be your, could even be your blood relatives. But if they are in a diabolical system and they are visiting your house, please tell them to come when you have the money to lodge them. I know it's going to be difficult. They will say you don't like your family members. I like you. In fact, the money you're supposed to use to come, let me send it to you. You celebrate Christmas there. Is someone hearing what I'm saying? Sometimes when the devil wants to kill people through this system, they use tradition to force it upon their lives. And the people visit you and go home. And you are there fighting what they brought. Are you, are you understanding me? Don't you know that even civilization teaches before somebody comes you should tell you that is coming someone just appear one day from the village with a bag and you are and you allow the person for what only your mother you should do that to do you, do you understand what i'm saying only your mother your mother and your father here you should do that too maybe your brothers that you know them that all of you are together you know this one have not entered the diabolic you bring them but if it's someone else that you don't know you just appear with a he appeared with the bag like a demon. I, 
And you just say, the Bible says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. He said, as you love yourself. If you love yourself, you'll be mindful of what they brought with the back. The back is a similitude of my load. And my burdens and all my sorrows. That's the meaning of the back. So as soon as you say, let me collect your back. You just sit in the sitting room. Let me go and put the back in the bedroom. You have put all the sorrows. It's a prophetic simile to them. In the bedroom. Put the back in the parlor. Sit down. Let's talk. How do you come? Where are you going to? With all kinds of, you know, I, I, I don't hate you, my brother. How is the village? How is everything? Actually, here, you don't just come like that. Here, you know, here is not village. Before we even eat, we have to check the, the cup. We have to measure it. And uh, that is what my mother used to say. He said, here in the city, we measure the gari. In the village, you carry hand and you pack it. But here in the city, we have to measure. You count it. You get my point. You count. You know which one you will eat today. So now that we didn't know you were coming, so we have to go and get extra. You get my point. And there's, you get my point. So, 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 so you have to do this. Then when, she, when we have an extra place, she push them to that place. Call play. Oh, let them stay there. Let them stay there. Are you understanding me? When we have one room that my mother was the minister of hospitality, whoever is coming from the village is staying in that one room. This one is coming to come and three sickness in Calabar is staying in that room. All of them come, come, come. I say, what's the meaning of this? We suffered. Every day, my mother, this sickness will come. The other one will come. Why this one is going? Another one is coming. Why the other one is going? Because people are coming in traffic. So whoever comes, drops his own and disappears. And, and, and we begin to battle with it. Because we were ignorant. We didn't know. Are you understanding me? Thank God we moved from the place closer to home to a place that you have to travel nine hours. So we went. When we went there, God helped us. We cut off. So nobody can spend, pay that kind of transport and begin to come such a distance. Listen carefully. These things we are saying could look so common, but it could be the reason why somebody is suffering. Do you understand me? The devil attack you through what you do not know. If you want to be hospitable, please manage it properly. Manage it with wisdom. Love your neighbor as you love yourself because of these things that we are seeing. Now, let's go into the next delivery about how do I come out of this stuff now? Let's assume I am plucked into this system. How do I come at it? Remember, we are still talking about dimensions. Huh? How do I come out of these dimensions of hell? We stop this at here with who? Abraham. Is that right? Now, Galatians chapter 3. Let's read the, the last verse there. Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. Have we found the last verse? Can we read it? One to go. I know not everybody is reading. Some are reading in their, in their spirit. Read verbally. One to go. Everyone. Now, if you are Christ, you are who? Abraham's seed. Why did God make that kind of a statement? He will have choose other words. If you are Christ, if I am Christ, I am not Takim's seed. I am Abraham's seed. So if Takim has a diabolical system, by being Christ, I'm no longer part of this system. I am not in this system. Is somebody hearing me? I want to pass you through the last phase of these things. Christ's dimension. 
If there's time, we'll see the seven dimensions in Christ. If there's no time, we'll just leave it at that. Now, listen. Say again, if I am Christ, there I am Abraham said, and here according to promise. Does God keep promise? So the Bible says, here according to promise. You see, if you don't believe in this and key into it, whatever system your family, your household plug into and they bat you into, if it is the biblical system, you will remain there. And the heritage you have just read about, the six dimensions of hell, will be speaking in your life because of the system. So salvation, why they call it born again? Born again is a shift in dimensions. It's something that happened and unplug you from the biblical system. This system is called the kingdom of darkness. This one is called the kingdom of light. Are you understanding me? So, the Bible says that Christ has what? Translate, translated us from the kingdom of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of light. So, salvation completely unblocks a person and brings the person here. That is why faking your Christianity is not good. I believe why in the church today we have a lot of people who are suffering from the six dimensions of hell is because we have many Christians who are still in the diabolical system and they claim to be born again. Both we pastors and you members, everybody's struggling under this stuff because of people are here. Their salvation was not strong enough to bring them here. It did not unplug them when it unplugs you, you key into the Christ dimension. Are you understanding me? Now, Christ is the one that deletes you from your household. Christ. He takes you away from the heritage of your family. The heritage if your, if your family is plugged into a biblical system, of course, the ultimate ancestral spirit, which is hell, the spirit of hell is going to work in the life of everybody. So the only way to come out is for you to find Christ. Are you understanding me? I want to demonstrate this one that I'm just talking about. So I need people to start coming like this, as many as you can come. Let's form a lineage. I need men. It's men that form lineage. I don't know if we have enough men. You, come and stand here. Follow him. Drop, put your hand on his shoulder. We have formed one hand. We have formed a lineage from, I don't want to give you the name before the man say, shift. So, but this is just analysis. From Cain to the next person. You get my point? Come. You stand here. You put your hand on him. I need more men. Come. Quick, quick, quick. Put your hand on him. You stand. Put your hand on him. You put your hand on him. You put your hand on him. I need more men. You see the way lineages are appearing on the face of the earth. People are marrying and people are being born. So this one got married and gave back to this. This, this one. God, oh no. You cannot go and be the lineage of your grandfather. You, you go. Go, go to the front. This is great grandfather now. How can you go and overcome great grandfather? Look, look at these guys. <laughs> now, now, this is the youngest son of this lineage. You get my point? So this is the great, 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 great grandfather. So let's say he was in the diabolical system. He would give back his to his children and groom them within the system. And because they grew within the system, they will share in the six dimensions of hell. And because this one know nothing, he knew what the father told him, he also transferred it to his child and cultured the lifestyle of the child. The child was also born in the diabolical system. And he continued until he gets to this place. Are you understanding me? Let's say this place is the current generation that we are all alive. But all these ones, they have become ancestors. 
they have died many years ago. You get my point? And you now come to church, every of my sister and fathers. G -g 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 -g. Then they'll be there looking at you. They say, what's wrong with these guys? Now, listen carefully. Listen carefully. Look at where we are going. Let's assume this is the WK heritage that we're all born into. That system. And we begin to share in all the stuff. There is no amount of prayer. If you like, carry prophet to go and visit your father's house. It's not the same house they are going. They will go to the house, collect your money and go away. Or raise altars, sow seeds, pour oil. Whatever you pour, it is the system that is responsible for the suffering. It's not a lack of prayer. It's not a lack of fasting. You see, I have seen pastors who are suffering on, on that distance. Intense suffering. There was one I saw in this nation. I just told him, sir, can you just leave ministry? He thought I was attacking him. I said, because he, he told me he had been there for 20 years. The, the place, that was when we came newly. The place, sorry, seven years. The ministry is him, the, his wife, and his children, and some uh, animals around, the goats, and, and, and all of that stuff. Because whenever they do something, the thing are just running around, and they, and, and they come in. And he's been there. You can see the suffering in his life. I said, can you just leave this thing? Because the call of God alone, once God dropped the mantle, you disconnect. If your own is not having the mantle, it means he has not sent you. So you cannot pastor a people while you are in the system. You will transfer the system to the people. It is blessed people that you pastor. So that you transfer the blessing to those you are pastoring. So People like they say children are born, they are born in the system, they grow in the system. Is and and this one now, let's assume this one now came, he now discovered Christ. And now begin to go to father and die, or die, die and fall, and now begin to use oil and begin to check. Ah, ah, all my can I can I have ladies, maybe even boys, come, 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 quick, quickly. Maybe, maybe two. Two ladies, two young men, quickly. It's Anina. Come. Come. Good. Come, come, come. I need two ladies. Now. Come, come to the front. No. You stand here. You stand here. Son of man, stand beside. Stand beside him. We are not seeing you guys very well. Can you just turn like this? Let the line cough like this. The line. Good. Now, you come. Come this way. Still, still put your hands, though, because you are the same lineage. Don't break the, 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 the bloodline. Hey, you know, there's also bloodline, the demons of the bloodline. I, I, I forgot that nonsense. Now watch this. This, 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 this are the same family. Is that not? They, they're all from, the same family from here. And this one is there. You stay in the front. So you, because you are the son of this one, so this is your uncle, this is your uncle, this is your auntie, this is your auntie. You now went and met the prophet and said, all my aunties are not married. My uncles is not married. My this and that and that, there's no job. We are suffering. The prophet now says, ah, he's an ancestor. Ancestor. You, do you know who they are blaming? This man. <laughs> <laughs> they are blaming this man. That existed in 1324. You know, the demons he served, the spirit he served, the covenant he brought you into, the, there's a cause in the bloodline. It's not the bloodline, it's the diabolical system that they were all raised into. A godless system. Are you understanding me? So, 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 but, but, but look at the way it works. The Bible says, if you are Christ, tell me Christ, that means so long as he continue being less. Which name are we going to give this lineage? Let's just give the lineage. Find a name. No, no, no. <laughs> let's not look for trouble. Find a name for this lineage. <laughs> okay, let's call the lineage um, Samson. The lineage of Samson. So the lineage of Samson, because they all grow up in the diabolical system, and these things are happening. If this guy find truth, he will find Christ. When he find Christ, let me tell you what happened in the spirit realm when you find Christ. But before I go there, let's assume the Christ he introduced to, maybe he found Christ. Okay, let's assume it is this one that found Christ. 
You get my point? Or let's assume these ones are the relatives of this one, not this one. So these are his brothers and sisters. Come to the front. So let's assume the guy in the front, the guy in the front, all of you should stay on the same line because you're all brothers. The guy in the front, this is their father. This is their, their father. So their father gave back to them. You get my point? So in order to break themselves from whatever is happening here, it's very simple. I need only women to come and stand on this line. Ladies, come. Because the church is a woman. You get my point? Just come and stand in this line from here. There. There. The same way they put their hands, do it also like that. Now, I want to show you something here. The, not too much of you. Uh -huh. Good, you stop there. Now, listen. Let's assume this is the lineage. The, the divine lineage. The church of Jesus Christ on earth. Are you understanding me? Abraham laid the foundation for it. And the Bible now says, if you are Christ, in this lineage, it is not diabolic. It is Christ's dimension. So when you now get saved, let's assume all of them got saved genuinely. Come. As soon as they get saved, they break from this one. Genuine salvation break them from this lineage. So whatever is flowing in the divine lineage of God on the face of the earth, which the book of Psalms call it the glorious things spoken concerning you, will begin to manifest there. They don't need to pray about it. They don't need to fast about it. It will just begin to manifest. Before you know whatever evil was happened to them when they were here, will just disappear. Are you understanding me? You see what I've shown you now? I want to show you in truth. So let this one, I mean in the world, let this one be in the back of your mind. All you need is a swap of lineages. A swap. There's a lineage of Christ on the face of the earth. A righteous lineage. That is where we belong to. That is where you should belong to. The Bible says this lineage, no weapon formed against it shall prosper. Any tongue that rise against his judgment, it shall condemn. We have things that God has spoken concerning us, but they cannot manifest if we are in our natural lineages. I thank God for that scripture, Galatians 3, 9, 29. That was what saved me. If you are Christ. Are you understanding me? God bless you. you can go back to your seat. Put your hand together for them. Hallelujah. So, do not forget what we just analyzed now. The two lineages. Are you understanding me? So me, if I am Christ. I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. Say, if I am Christ. I, be, I am a seed of Abraham. And a heir according to promise. Does, I asked again, does God fulfill his promises? So. To be free from ancestral whatever, just sweep, switch lineages. The root, the ancestral root of the redeemed is Abraham. The ancestral root of the lost is their father's house. So you have to choose. I repeat, the ancestral root of the redeemed of the Lord is where? Is Abraham. The ancestral root of the lost is what? In fact, can I really tell you who is the ancestral root of the lost? It's brother Cain. But the flood wiping away, do you know who brought him back? Ham. Do you know that some prophets, okay, let me not go there. Ham brought it back. Nimrod, all those guys. If you are not born again, that is your root. You are rooted in Nimrod. You are rooted in Ham. You are rooted in, in Cain. So whatever is rooted in Abraham cannot flow to you. The reason why Abraham is a high-ranking person is because when God says your assignment is to be a father of nations, is to disconnect people from the root that guarantees the six dimensions of hell and bring them to the root that guarantees the Christ dimension. So if you ask me, 
who is your father? I, who was your father? I can tell you to Akim. If you ask me, who is your great great grandfather, Abraham? Or I ask you, it depends on what you're asking. Do you understand me? There is a swap of lineages through salvation. So don't ever see yourself as you are from your father's house. How many of you are born again? Are you, have you made up your mind to serve the Lord? Then you're no longer of your father's house. So whatever is happening here, have no bearing. It should have no bearing on you. Listen. I want to give you an assignment. Go and check the heritage of Abraham. That is what belongs to you. Go and read the Bible and find out what is the heritage of Abraham. The Bible calls it there's a, one of it that is called the blessing of Abraham upon the Gentiles. Galatians 3 13. Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law, being made a cause for us, for it is written, causes everyone that is hung on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham may come upon us, the Gentiles. And the blessing of Abraham is the promise of the Spirit. That is the promise of the Spirit that unlocks the Christ dimension. In our lives are you understanding me when the christ dimension is unlocked you don't go through all this suffering and all this stuff so let me explain one other thing to us let me explain one other thing to us go to the book of uh, romans sorry ephesians let's read ephesians first ephesians chapter 2 Let's establish these things in the world. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but follow what? I didn't hear you. Have you found the scripture? Let's read it one more time, everyone. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Say, I hear. So, the, by virtue of coming into Christ and having the Christ dimensions un, unlocked within you, you are no longer a stranger. Who are strangers? Strangers are those in this system. You are no longer a stranger or a foreigner who is foreign to this system. Are you understanding me? You belong to the household. Abraham. The household of God. Do you say? Having been built, verse 20, on the foundation of what? The apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. In whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy habitation in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for what? A dwelling place of God in the spirit. That should be your focus. Not breaking of curses. Because they cannot be broken. Focus on becoming a temple for God in the spirit. Are you understanding me? A temple for God in the spirit where you'll be constructed to disconnect from the diabolical and you get established in the divine. Are you understanding me? You get established in the divine. We are no longer strangers. No. By virtue of the blood of Jesus that has washed us. We are no longer strangers. There are dimensions that must be poured in your life. For you to align with this one. Number one. Before I begin to show you. Before I begin to show you those dimensions. I want you to understand. That the dimensions will require your will. Your commitment. Your decision. Your desire. For them to rest on you. So the first dimension that must come on you. Okay, before I would say uh, your, your desire, your will, let me say three, um, two things. You, which is your desire, your will, then you also need a good church. 
Very important. When it comes to these matters, good churches are very, very important. Because most of what is confusing people today are bad churches. You know why? Because God, Jesus, positioned his church. Watch this. Oh. This is very dangerous. The one I want to write, number eight. Watch this. Number eight is spiritual flow. Now, Satan position position first, the first church the first church to make sure nobody is free from the diabolical. Let me show you in the Bible. Second Peter chapter 2. Can you see take more? Okay, don't worry, I won't bore you too much. I'll soon close. Because we have young ones among us. Go to Second Peter. Second Peter, are you in chapter 2? This is a scripture that spoke about deception and false teachers, false prophet. Look at what he said in verse, eight, in verse 17 that we read earlier. These are wells without water, clouds carried by tempest, for whom is reserved what? The blackness of darkness forever. These are spiritual leaders, the prophets, apostles, and all of that stuff. Verse 18. For when they speak, Great swelling words of emptiness. Before December 30, uh, 31st, you are coming back with your husband. Amen! Great swelling words of emptiness. God will give you a job before 31st December. Amen! Great, great. You must have a December to remember. Great swelling words of emptiness. That means they prophesy according to your gullible nature. It says they allow through the loss of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. Verse 19. Why they promise them liberty? They themselves are what? Slaves of corruption. By whom a person is overcome, by him also is brought into bondage. Verse 20. Look at the game. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome the later end is worse for them than the beginning so the devil established the first church here so that in so that you will run to church and things you have given your life to christ only to be trapped in an antichrist system that will be playing games with you by keeping you in the diabolic here is somebody with a man that is not his husband and the church is not telling you the truth rather they are collecting your tithe and your offering and praying that curses should be broken you are kept in the diabolic here is somebody who is just sleeping around with everybody but is he, he contributes so much amount of money in the church maybe he's a church worker but whenever he goes out he has this man here he has another man here or he has only one there and and and, and all of that stuff and whenever he comes to the church the pastor will look at him and say sister the lord bless you he said, the Lord favor you. He said, the Lord is your guide. The Lord, and when the woman got up one money, because she went to sleep with another man, and by the time he's coming back, he carried one spirit. And the time she get back home, the spirit appeared as a spirit husband. Like, and she now come and tell pastor and say, somebody tell you, who? when I was sleeping, and the pastor would say, those are ancestral forces. Those are spirit husbands. Incubus and audibus. Let's break them. They keep you in the diabolic system and binding the devil. Can he be bound? No. It's a game. You are in a false church. Oil, water, salt, sowing seed, false church. No false church can deliver you from the political system. They will only talk about it. Oh, you have to raise an altar. Oh, you have to break an altar. Oh, you have to uproot a charm. That is the way false church ministers to people. You can't break from the system here because the spiritual flow will not let it happen. The spiritual flow is shadow oriented, not substance oriented. Are you understanding me? The spiritual flow is what? Shadow oriented. They bring in Nehushtan. They bring in Nehushtan to it. Shadows, not substance. That is what it is. The first church. That is why nobody can be free from these six dimensions of hell. Worshipping in the wrong church.
is impossible. It's impossible. At most, Satan will dress you up with some fake miracles and destroy your life finally. It's impossible. Because the Bible says, why they promise them liberty? Then they say, our father, our servants of corruption. So that when the people have escaped the world, they get trapped again. That's why you see, you are depreciating in your spiritual life, but maybe prospering economically. Are you understanding what I'm saying here? How many of you were living that kind of a Christian before? Your spiritual life was zero, but you, are, you, but you were doing well financially. And you never cared. You were singing a choir, religious, oh, you are good, you fast and pray, and uh, you were doing very well, and yet now you know you were not doing very well. Let me see your hand up. The first church will keep you decaying, and you think you are making it. Do you understand what I'm saying here? That is why the system, the diabolical system, when a church is planted in that system, you see the throne of Satan in that church. It, 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 it stirs the heart of people to be mindful of the things of men and not the things of God. So, if you, if, so just to keep you in the diabolical system. And that's why you have to keep struggling with the curses, struggling with the devil, struggling with the midst of wickedness, struggling. You are, you are a member of the synagogue of Satan on the face of the earth. You are rooted in Ham, in Canaan, in Nimrod. The six dimensions of hell are happening in your life and the pastor is pouring oil on you to calm it down. Serving you on holy, holy communion to see how you are going to come out of it. Use, using water and pouring on you. Of course, when you're on fire, they have to use water. When hell is burning your life, they have to use water on you. That is a sign that what is burning you is the six dimensions of hell. So they will tell you, bring water to church. Tomorrow is going to be water service. It's going to be a holy water service. And you, you come around to receive water because your life is really on fire. Hell has set your life on fire. They'll be pouring that water on you. Another day you come again. If you were delivered the first time, why are you coming back again? Because it's a game. Why are they doing it every time? It's a game. It's a game just to keep you zombified while they collect your money. They, they keep you zombified and they, they keep you in a system that is not helping you. So, so because you're on fire, they use water. I, I, I remember going to one church, they say it's water service. You see water on the pulpit. I began to ask myself, in fact, the pastor told them to bring it on Monday and keep it so that by Sunday, angel will come the night and sanctify it. Yeah, yeah, people. What kind of angel? He asked you to, to come and keep it for him so that at night he will come and sanctify it for you. Touch all the charms on it. So that by the time it walks, you think it's God. So they kept the oil, sorry, the water in the church. It's up here in Nairobi. They kept the water in the church on Monday and picked it on Sunday. And they took it home. Even though that you don't have sense to go and drink, you don't know what they put inside. Or you don't know the prayer that was made on it. You don't know the kind of things that happen at night. Why you are not there? What happened at night? The kind of snakes they projected and the spirits that drop on it and you that is why you end up being possessed. You see, when this diabolical system, it gets people's life filled with unclean spirit. They begin to live like madmen, like insane people. They don't have brain to think about their lives. Are you understanding me? They don't think about their lives they don't think about their future. They are just there. Brains have been stolen. Minds have been stolen. Nobody is thinking about the future. The only thing they are thinking about is a man or a woman. How to get married. As if marriage is a future. Marriage is not even a future. It's one of those things that happens when you are following the law. And if it's part of your destiny, is somebody hearing me? Everything is earthly based. The first church. So be, and the flow... Is based on shadows. Now we now go to, and it can only unleash the six dimensions of hell. But the, the but the Christ dimension can only be found in the true church. What is the true church? Go to the book of Second First Timothy chapter three. Let's read one of our familiar scriptures. First Timothy three. You won't fail. The Lord will cause his face to keep shining upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. After this day, you'll be ushered into dimensions of blessings. Where anything that is connected to your root will be cut off from your life. 
anything because now you have known your root your root is now abraham is somebody hearing me it's no longer where you were born first corinthians sorry first timothy chapter 3 first timothy chapter 3 verse verse 14 says first timothy please verse 14 these things are right to you though i hope to come to you shortly but if i'm delayed arise so that you may know how to, you ought to conduct yourself here in the house of god which is what the church of the living god the pillar and ground of truth do you see the place you're supposed to go to the true church is the pillar and ground of truth it is god's legislating center on earth god's legislating center that is where the decrees of the watchers are executed the sentence of the holy one are put into effect in our lives is somebody hearing me is that when we get there the bible says upon man's side there shall be what deliverance and holiness and the sons of jacob will possess their possession so in that place we become the planting of the lord that he may be glorified are you are you understanding me and because you are part of the spiritual flow in that place which is no shadow but substance you see yourself experiencing deliverance possessing of possession prosperity things break forth are you understanding me because truth is being taught and that is where what i want to show you the seven things that must drop in your in you it comes through this channel but let's go through this let's finish it up at 16 and without controversy great is what the mystery of god look up at the board what do, do we have here mystery of godliness so you only experience it where in the true church great is the mystery of godliness so you are a wit you are experiencing the mystery of godliness god the father is your father blessings are your portion you are part of the church of the living god globally your ancestor is abraham and the christ dimension what is flowing through you and you belong to a local church that operates as a grand and pillar of truth show me a person who is like this i will show you a person that will not have causes to break I'll show you a person that will not go into all this ancestral root, ancestral spirit nonsense. The person will not be having nightmare with late uh, people who have died and, and they're supposed to be resting in peace. They are resting in your brain. You know, all the stuff, it will not be there. Because where you are, it does not happen. For we have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, where there are what? Innumerable company of angels. Where, where the, the, to the judge of all, are you understanding me? To the general assembly that is in heaven, to the spirit of just men that, that, that makes perfect, to the blood of sprinkling that speak better things than out of heaven. You can't have those dimensions and suffer. I call them Christ dimensions. Christ dimensions in the days to come, I will teach about the Christ dimensions. But I want to show you things that have to drop in your life for you to find yourself here, for you to be unplugged from here and find yourself here. Number one, these things will depend on your decision. I told you before, the first thing that must drop on your life is the Holy Ghost. You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost come upon you. Are you understanding me? And the power of the highest must overshadow you so the first thing must receive is the holy spirit he is called the promise of the father when you meet the father he gives you the holy spirit do you understand me and you find the holy spirit in a true church where he lives where he builds number two the second thing that will enter into your life that must enter into your life is righteous truth righteous truth must find a resting place in your life righteous truth must find a resting place in your life you shall know the truth the truth you know will unplug you are you understanding me number three that must find a resting place in your life is the gift of the spirit the gift of the holy ghost you have received they must start manifesting in your life when they manifest you're already in the divine system because the gifts enable us to network with the system do you understand me the gift enable us to do what network with the system so when you have the gift of the spirit in your life there is nothing from hell that can sit on you because you know how to network with this divine system are you understanding me number four the fourth thing that must sit on your life 
is what is called the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and have no sorrow. That divine empowerment to prosper regardless of the situation must be on you. The blessing. The blessing. That divine empowerment to prosper regardless of the situation you find yourself. Isaac was carrying that one and the enemy could not weary him. Do you understand me? Are you understanding what I'm saying? That must drop on you. Now, number five, the fifth thing that must drop on you is the uncommon grace of God. When we say the grace of God, this is what we're talking about look like the same thing, but they are not the same. The grace of God he is his unmeritable favor that involves him pardoning us and giving us the power to sin no more. It's a kind of favor from the throne room that pardons us and gives us the power not to sin no more. So you must receive that into your life. The, that is why whenever we come to the throne of grace, we assess grace. Do you understand me? So God's grace must be upon your life. Now, grace and mercy look alike, but they are not the same. So number six, the mercy of God must be upon your life. Look at what God said about his mercy. He said, I will not take it away from the seed of David the way I took it away from Saul. Is that not? So, so with the mercy of God upon your life, nothing can mess you up. So when you have that, it, it will position you on the divine light. These are the spiritual treasures that helps you to align. And the last thing that you must have is the revelation of the present will of God. The revelation of the present will of God. So you must know the will of God in the present tense. So when you are starting a business, know the will of God in the present tense. You are going to marry, know the will of God in the present tense. Whatever you are doing in life, know the will of God in the present tense. Listen, the knowledge of God's will in the present tense keep us within this system. Do you understand me? It keeps us within this system. The knowledge of God's will. And let me demonstrate one truth lastly before we pray for you to understand what I call the prophetic purpose of the revelation of God's will. So I will need like some, maybe eight young men, just come and hold your hands in a cycle here. Let's demonstrate that truth. Before those men that came here before, just, just hold your hands in a cycle. I need to show something. Just if you can form a wide cycle here. I think the two of you are okay. Yes, a wide cycle. Just join your hands. And, and, and make sure the hand is wide, stretch it ahead, move backward and stretch it, a wide circle. Now, let's assume, put your hand, let's assume this is the system, this cycle. Do you understand me? This cycle is a system called divine will. So, all I have given to you will place you here in the, in the realm of the spirit. Now, the last one I gave you, which is the revelation of the present will of God, look at what it helps us. Any day you are taking a decision out of the cycle, you know. Are you, are you understanding me? Because you can take a, a decision out of the cycle. Once you walk away from the cycle, every blessing that was meeting you here will no longer meet you. So evil will break out. And when you now go back to God, God will say, go back to the cycle. Go back to the cycle. So the revelation of the immediate present will will make sure that we remain within the cycle. Now let's act a little drama to dramatize this truth. I need to, I think Nina, you know how to add drama, you come. Then, do we have a loaf of bread in this place? Nobody, give me that, that bottle of water. <laughs> you know, in the crowd of we have everything. If I ask for a plate of food now, somebody's going to bring it. <laughs> now come, come and stay here. No, no, you stay inside. That is the church. Stay inside at the, as the church. Now look at what the devil does to us. Let's assume she's very tasty. She needs water. Are you understanding me? She needs water. This could be money. It could be marriage. It could be a job. It could be a car. It could be any earthly blessing. That's the Bible says, don't set your heart on earthly things. Because when the heart is set on earthly things, you will know which one the devil is using to deceive you. So let's assume she's within the will of God and she needs this water and I'm here. Come and take you see? Now, she just came, take it, walk out. No, you have to walk out before you take it. You see? She has received what she needs, but it is outside the will of God. 
You know why? Because she didn't know. There was no revelation of the message. You see the way she ran? Christian should not run that way. <laughs> no, I, I, you see, I thank God the way she acted it. Because that's the way we behave. That, that's the way we behave as Christians. Oh, I, I have a job. A job at the American Embassy. Hey! And you run to go and pick it. That's the, way, that's the way we behave. So, but look at what Revelation does. Now, what push you out is carnality and the need of the moment. That is why don't be need conscious. Don't be need conscious. Because the need of the moment, oh, it's the money I need. It's a wife I need. It's a husband I need. It's a job I need. And you are desperate. So that desperation makes you to jump out of your territory. Out of your, don't worry, the day I will teach about a divine protocol, you understand. You jump, you left your territory, and the Bible says, a bird that wandered out of his place. So you have wandered out of your place because of the, look at what, what the devil will do to you. When you get here, you see this water, you cannot even drink it. He will make sure that you cannot open it. Okay, let's assume you even drink it. Only the water we drink within divine will, that will bless us. Anything you take outside the will of God will become a curse in your life. Are you understanding me? Because even within divine will, there are blessings. But while you are here sometimes, they come in seasons. And the season have not come for it. You have to wait. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. So you have to wait for it. So when the devil wants to kill your waiting, he entices you. Do you understand me? And you walk out of the place. So go back. Let me show you one more thing. He enticed us and we walk out of the place of divine will. So, so look at what God does. Look at what God does. Let's assume she walked in revelation. How many things did I give you? Seven. Read from number one. Number one is what? The Holy Spirit. The person of the Spirit. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number Number five, number six, number seven. Now, let's assume she has the mercy of God, but there is no revelation of immediate present will. So, come, while she is here outside, she now realizes that this is a mistake. She now pray for God to show her mercy. God will show her mercy by pushing her back. Get back. You get my point? He will push her back. Look at what some people do. When God pushed them back, they will not ask God to come and carry this water. <laughs> why it is defiled. That is why when you are out of God's will, the money you got will not follow you back to the place of God's will. The things you got cannot follow you back. Are you understanding me? You have to forgo it. The Bible says, if our fathers Abraham have remembered the, the cities they left, they will have, have reason to, re to return. But they look forward to a city which has foundation. Hebrews chapter 11. Which builder? Can we read it? Open your Bible quickly. Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. Verse 13. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but have seen them what? Afar off. Look at verse 14. For those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland. And truly, if they had called to mind, tell you remember, don't call to mind the things you've left behind. If they have called to mind that country from which they have come out, they will have had opportunity to do what? To return. Satan creates opportunity. You can only become a victim. It creates opportunity to return and you can only follow it if it is in your mind. Is someone hearing me? He creates opportunity for us to return back to the place of iniquity. We can only return if, the, if what he created is reflecting in our minds. So you must understand the importance of immediate presence. This is where we are lacking in the church. We are lacking it today in the body because we have the mercy of God upon us. We bank on it to see us through. We don't know that most time before mercy appear, you have been messed up thoroughly. You have been so messed up thoroughly that it will take ages to even recover. Is someone understanding me? So what you need to do, why God has positioned you here, prevention is better than cure. Anything you are not sure is God's will, don't enter into it. 
have the revelation of the immediate present will of God. So the enemy can stand here, even using your friends, to entice you to come out of the place of divine will. If you have the revelation of the immediate present will of God, you are going to see this barrier in the realm of the spirit. When you see this barrier, you know as a child of God, you don't go beyond the barriers. Come. Going, open it for her. Going beyond the barrier is called trespass. Do you understand me? Going beyond the barrier is trespass. So you have to stay within the barriers. Go back. You have to stay within the barriers that God has set for us. Are you, are you understanding me? When we grow within the barriers that God has set, our friends may succeed ahead of us. Do you remember? Don't bother yourself. The day your processing season will be over and that which comes on you come on you, your friends will be needing help from you. Divine process is very important is connected to divine progress divine process is important to divine progress progress because it is that process that will tell you the, the, the enemy will stand here to entice you to come and take the water you say no i won't take it why it's not god's will for me how do you know there's a barrier there's a barrier it's not god's will for me because whatever is god's will for me will be found within the will of god hold it it will be found within. So while you are there, it's not there. Continue your prayer. Continue your work with God. No compromise. Keep to standards. Press up. Put your heart in heavenly things, not earthly things. And be doing what you know is God's will for your life. Be busy in the will of God for your life. Just be busy in the will of God. Find out from God, why am I here on earth? And be busy with it. What is it that you want me to do now at this phase of my life? The Bible says, as you keep doing that, which you know, this is God's will for my life now. Remain patient. Through faith and patience, they inherit what the promises. So while you are there, walking within the face of God's will for your life, you will begin to hit your seasons. The Bible says he give them meat in due season. There are seven seasons that will hit you before your life on earth is over. I, I can't teach that today. But as the seasons begin to hit you, the first one comes, you experience a shift. Another one comes, you experience a shift. They keep coming. They keep coming. And each shift is bringing a dimension of glory. Each shift is bringing a dimension of glory. Are you understanding me? And as we become valuable in the kingdom, we increase in our ranking. As we increase in our ranking, the quality of blessings increase in our lives. Relationship change. You see a lot of things happening. Blessings breaking forth. And those who are mocking at you will be attending your ceremonies it pays to serve jesus it doesn't matter how long it takes we should put the heart of it i mean the heart of our fathers in our heart look at what what our fathers serve him they were, they were looking for that city that has foundation and yet they never miss anything on it so what i've just shown you will keep you within the heritage of the divine system to stay in the divine system is not cheap the flesh, the world, and the devil will tempt you out of it. Completely. So you have to fight the battle every day to remain within. You don't go where the Lord has not gone. Are you understanding me? You, whatever is not in God's will, you don't do it. We suffer when we are outside this cycle. When we are within the cycle, a little prayer, God will respond. When you are outside, God cannot hear you. That's what the Bible says call upon him while he is near there are we, there are zones what did first john say he said when we pray according to god's will he hears us so this is god's will the cycle prayers are made here fasting is made here when you now come 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 when you now move away and you are going through the consequence you are fasting here you are praying here no result because first john the law of first john is what governs the, the answer to prayers this is the confidence we have in you. Is that not? That anything we pray in your will, you answer us. So, but you have left the will and you are now praying. A lot of Christians, look at the life they are living. They left the will of God and they are praying for the consequences to quench. And God said, no. 
You don't need prayer. Go back. You need revelation. Where did I miss it? Because when you walk out of this cycle, you have entered this one, the diabolical uh, system. There are only two systems on earth. You are either in God's system or the biblical system. In the biblical system, you are not surrounded. Do you know what surrounds you here? The angels of the Lord. The Bible says they encamp. They build their camp around you so that they form barriers so that you will not walk out. They build their camp around you to keep you within the place of divine will. Are you understanding me? So this is why if you want, look at, look at what happened to Nomi. She wandered away from her camp just because of a little moment of what? Famine. She wandered away. She lost her husband, lost her two children and came back empty. The day she came back, go back, it's like going back to the place of divine will. Is that not? That's how it is. So, so for us to keep enjoying the blessings of Abraham, the Christ dimensions, we must pay every price to remain within the place of divine will. If you are not in the place of divine, divine will, you are automatically connected to the diabolical system and the seven dimensions of hell will be your heritage. I pray that God will use these words to build you up and give you an inheritance and whether that sanctify. God bless you. you. Can go back to you. See, put your hand together for our sister, brother. Stand on your feet, please. I've gotten to the point I wanted to close for the sake of the young ones. There is so much to share. Listen carefully. The greatest battle of our lives now will have to fight any distraction. Are you are you understanding me? That comes to take us away from the place of God's will. Our peace is in the place of God's will. So the revelation of His will will help us remain within the restrictions of the almighty as we bring this in-house apostolic summit to close today there's a heritage for us if you watch the way the lord has been moving for with us from sunday he spoke about spiritual heritage and today we is we are ending with this important topic the truth about ancestral roots we, now we have accepted things in our lives that are not part of our ancestral root the first prayers we are going to pray because we are going to a time of prayer right now. The first prayer we are going to pray, whatever I brought into my life, that is not part of my ancestral root in Christ, I expel it. You have authority to throw away poverty. Do you hear what I just said? You have authority to throw away that poverty you collected. It's not your portion. You have authority to throw away that life of debt you collected. It's not your portion. Whatever you collected, that is not part of the ancestral lineage in Christ. We're taking it out. Every hell dimension will lose its grip from your life. Are you understanding what I'm saying now? Lift up your two hands. Let's begin to thank God for the word that he has spoken to us today. For opening our understanding, giving us the grace to sit, to hear, to listen, to absorb. Let's just open our mouth and thank him. Let's bless his holy name. Let's appreciate him for his greatness. Let's appreciate him for his marvelous deeds. Let's thank him for the insight, for the revelation, for the truth, for everything that he has done for us. Let's appreciate him for everything. If you know there's something you learned today, open your mouth and thank God for it. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Come into his courts with praise. If there's something in your life that you know you are learning today for the first time, lift up your voice and thank God for it. Before we get into the place of placing a request upon the altar of his will. Open your mind and thank God for everything that he has spoken to us today. Not just today, the whole of this week. Everything they have been speaking to us. Everything we have been hearing. All the impartation, all the, all the anointings that have, has, has been coming from Monday to Tuesday to Wednesday to Thursday to, to Friday to Saturday. And now today, he has been with us. He has opened our eyes to know, to see a lot of things. He has brought us into divine heritages. We have received divine heritages. We have received blessings. Lift up your voice and thank you for all that we have received since we started it in house. Apostolic summit. Bless his holy name for all the blessings, for all the impartation, for all the revelation. For all the move of his spirit, for all the move of his spirit, for all the move of his spirit. Makali kolomo setele, reba ba 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 kanda la kala masata, rakola prosota ne kaya ba ba ba.
Lord, we come to the throne of mercy today. We come to the throne of mercy today. We come to the throne of mercy. We come to your 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 throne of mercy today. We thank you, Lord, for opening our eyes to see, our ears to hear, our minds to understand. We bless your name for opening our spirit to hear, to, to perceive for the impartations of your spirit in our spirit for everything that you have dropped in our heart. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we bless you. Whatever you know that the Lord did this week, open your mouth and thank Him. Specifically, specifically what He did. Specifically what the Lord did. Specifically, open your mouth and bless Him. The things you know He did this week. The things you know He did this week. Specifically, open your mouth and bless Him for those things. Thank you for that miracle. Thank you for that move of his spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Here I come before the God of all the earth to pray, eh, to pray. Eh. Here I come before the God of all the earth to pray. Just to pray. Here I come, here I come. Here I come
Whatever it is, lift up your voice and pray. Anything, Lord, I come before your throne. Whatever is not part of your my heritage in you, you can take any prayer position and pray for the depth of your heart. Whatever is not part of my heritage in Christ. Today I separate from it. Today I separate from it. Whatever is in my life, that is not part of my heritage in Christ. Open your mouth and pray. pray from the depth of your heart because by faith enter the court of heaven and reject it denounce it reject it when you reject it God can take it when you reject it the Holy Spirit can remove it when you reject it the Holy Spirit can remove it whatever is not part of your heritage when you reject it, the Holy Spirit can remove it. When you reject it, the Holy Spirit can remove it. So lift up your voice and reject it. Whatever you reject, the Holy Spirit will remove. Whatever you reject, the Holy Spirit will remove. Anything in my life that is from any root that is not part of my root in Christ, that is not part of my ancestral root in Christ, I reject it, I denounce it, I reject it, I denounce it in the name of Jesus, I reject it, I denounce it. Whatever is not part of my ancestral roots in Christ, I reject it, I denounce it. Whatever is not a blessing in my life, I renounce it. I denounce it, I reject it for my destiny. Whatever is not a blessing in my life, whatever is not a blessing in my life, open your mouth and pray. Whatever is not a blessing in your life, as reject it so that the Holy Ghost can take it. Reject it so that the Holy Ghost can take it. Any spiritual heritage that is not rooted in your ancestral roots in Christ, reject it and let the Holy Ghost take it. Whatever you may be going through, mention it, reject it, let the Holy Ghost take it. Whatever 
Rakala basanda le kayo baba baba satalia. Le baba kaka la kala brasha tali. Le kala basanda le kaya baba baba. Rakala brasha tali kala masata. Le baba baba kada le kala masata. Rakala brasha tali boya basanda. Rakala brasha tali kala masata. Whatever is not my heritage in you, Jesus, take it out of my life. Whatever is not my heritage in you, Savior, take it out of my life. Whatever is not part of my heritage in you, that may have stuck in my life. Whatever I inherit through sin, whatever I inherit through rebellion, whatever I inherit, let it be taken away. Whatever I inherit, let it be taken away. Whatever I inherit, let it be taken away. Whatever I inherit, Lord, let it be taken away from my life. Mali prosodo ne kala basete ne, reba bakada na kala prosodo ne kaya Mali posede ne kala prosodo ne kaya ba, ne kala prosada ni moyo posede ne kaya ba. I come before your throne this very moment. I decree that whatever I inherit in my life that's not from your root, that's not from my ancestors, I will cross. I reject it. Whatever may be moving in my life. Moving in anyone's life that is not part of our ancestral root in Christ. Let it, oh God, be taken away right now by your spirit. Whatever is not part of you in our life, let it be taken away. Whatever is not part of you in our lives, let it be taken away. Whatever is not part of you in our lives, let it be taken away. Whatever is not part of you in our lives, let it be taken away. Whatever is not part of you in our lives, let it be taken away. Oh, Rakali Mosete de Kaya Baba, Bali Mosete de Kada Mosete de, Reba Baba Baka Dali Kada Mosete de Kaya Baba. Whatever is not part of you, oh God, in our life, let it be taken away. Father, we pray that you take it away. Lord, we pray that you dismantle it from the root in the name of Jesus, that it be taken away from our lives by the greatness of your power, Lord. You dismantle it, oh God. You dismantle it, oh God. Oh, Rakali Mosete de Kaya Baba. I pray everyone before your throne. Everyone who is praying before you, Lord. I pray, oh God, that you dismantle this thing. By the greatness of your power, you dismantle it. By the greatness of your power, you dismantle it. Oh, Rakala Mosete de Kaya Baba. Baba Baba Kala de Kolo Mosete. Rekolo Mosete de
Begin to tell the Lord whatever I observe, absorb into my life. I expel it. I reject it. Pray with fervency. I come into the divine system by your precious blood. I come into the divine system by your precious blood. I come into the divine system by your precious blood. Into the divine system, Lord. I come into the divine system by your precious blood, Lord. I come into the divine system by your precious blood, Lord. I come into the divine system by your precious blood. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I come into the divine system. Now, pray, pray, come into it. Declare your way into it by the blood of Jesus. Remember, we spoke about the blood of Jesus this week. By the blood of Jesus, I come into the divine system. I submit to the voice of the Lord for my life. Lima satale kaba satale. I submit to the will of God, to the ways of God, to the will of God, to the ways of God. I submit to the will, I submit to the way, I submit to the Lord our God. Let the mercy of the Lord speak upon my life right now and take out whatever is not part of my heritage in Christ Jesus. Let my heritage in Christ Jesus speak. Let my heritage in, heritage in Christ Jesus become the characteristic. Let it take out every lack. Let it take out every pain, every suffering. Whatever I'm going through in the name of Jesus, whatever is from the gates of hell, let it be eliminated right now. Let the Christ dimension come alive. Let the Christ dimension come alive in me. 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 In Jesus' name we pray. Let's be on our feet. He's a great God. He's a great God. He's a great God. All I know. All I know. He's a great God. 
to a divine dimension from this day forward. That whatever is not part of your Christ heritage, I command let it be dismissed from your life. I command let it be dismissed from your life. I command let it be dismissed from your life. Whatever is not part of your ancestral root in Christ, I command let it be dismissed from your life. I command, let it be dismissed from your life. Amen. Let the blood of Jesus keep you disconnected Amen. from every diabolic heritage, Amen. from the diabolic system in the name of Jesus. May the blood of Jesus keep you disconnected from the diabolic system. Amen. May the blood of Jesus keep us disconnected from the diabolic system. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask, O oh God, that the heritage of this eight days, let it wrap everyone. Amen. Let the days of sorrow and sighing flee away. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Every finger of darkness that may be squeezing the life of anyone, Lord, that is not part of our heritage. Amen. Therefore, we command, let it be paralyzed. Let it be paralyzed. Let it be paralyzed. Let it be paralyzed. In the name of Jesus Christ. I bring as many that you are preparing for ministry in this house. That everything you have done this week, let it form a platform for their ministry. Let it form a heritage for their calling. That even in years to come, it will manifest wherever they go. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. That whatever is from the ancestral root of the diabolic will not find a resting place in our lives. 
will not find a resting place in our children. We will not find a resting place in our children. We will not find a resting place in our lives. We will not find a resting place in our children. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we decree over this assembly and over every member of this house across the nations of the earth that let the righteous heritage of this mantle let it spread over every one of us. Let it spread over our households. Let our heritage in Christ take preeminence over every other heritage. Let it take preeminence. Whatever anyone have rejected, let the Holy Ghost consume it right now. Let the Holy Ghost consume it right now. Let the Holy Ghost consume it right now. Every sickness that has been rejected, let it be consumed. Every lack that has been rejected, let it be consumed. Every circumstance of life that has been rejected, let it be consumed. In the name of Jesus! Our children shall not die in their prime. They shall fulfill their destiny. They shall fulfill their days. The heritage of Abraham. The heritage of long life. The heritage of peace. The heritage of abundance. The heritage of gladness. The heritage of joy. The heritage of amazing mercy. Shall be our heritage. Shall be our heritage. Shall be our heritage. Shall be our heritage. I declare let the Christ dimension be activated in everyone's life. Let the Christ dimension be activated in anyone's life. Let the Christ dimension be activated in everyone's life right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. I want to finally pray for those of us that came out yesterday from number one to was it yesterday or two days ago? The number that we came out and we are raising 10,000 each for the urgent need that we need to solve in the house. Those of you that came out, I need to pray for you. Please come to the front. It was from number one to 66. I took 67. Somebody took 68. The person called me. You carry me when some carry their God. We'll take our offering after now. Feed me, Lord. When some feed their God. Hallelujah. You fall for me when some fight for their God. Declare it now. fulfill the emergency. I ask, oh God, 
that let none of us have an emergency in our life. You are a rewarder of those who diligently seek you. Throw the blanket of that reward upon our lives. And that in the life of our children, there will be no emergency case. In the name of Jesus. I pray, oh God, that as we release these monies to you, let heaven release substance to us. And as we take away the reproach, as we sustain the, the work of your hands, let, up, then let there be no reproach in our own lives. Let our lives be sustained in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name we pray. Oh, bless you. You can go back. Remain standing. There are two more things we need to do. But you in the front, you can go back and stay, stand where you are going back. We, before we take our offering, we were looking for, for those of you that have not been coming for the week meetings, maybe we need to let you know. We had a call, I explained on Friday, the company that is uh, broadcasting our satellite signals, they told us that they want to shut down the money cloud transmission because of delayed payment, because they have become a little bit strict. So I told them, because I was very weary, I told them they can shut it down because me, I'm tired. I was weary. And the lady in charge of our account, Nance Press, had, and I spoke with the CEO, and the CEO said, okay, if we can raise only $8,000 by Friday this week, they will keep the money cloud uh, broadcasting internationally. So we needed 150 people that would give 10,000 each. We got, plus me and one other person who came, we now have 68. So if you minus 68 from 150, how many do we have left? If you minus 50, it remains 100. You remove 18, it remain 82. So we need 82 more people to join us to give 10,000 between now and Tuesday. Sorry, Wednesday. Is it Wednesday or Tuesday? Tuesday. Between to now and next tomorrow. So if you feel that you can join us and give 10,000 shillings. 10,000 shillings is just $100. Just $100. Maybe those of you that are following us on TV, you can even participate. The pay bill is nine fifty four hundred. That's the pay bill you put in the money. And uh, just write, um, your, there's a number I'm going to give right now. So in case you want to join us, just come to the front. Let me pray for you. I need to give you a number, then pray for you also. Just come to the front in case you want to participate in this. You feel you were not in service during the week, and you want to give between now and Tuesday. You can give. While, buy, buy, while we bow our head in prayer, please come to the front. You carry me when some carry their gold. You feed me low when some feed their gold. Hallelujah. You fought for me when some fight for their gold. Jesus. Oh, you carry me, yeah. you carry me, where some carry their God. Hallelujah, yeah. you feed me, Lord, where some feed their God. This is an opening for you to tap into a dimension of blessing. Just come, just come in a sacrifice that we must all give. Somebody said to me, do you observe that each time giving is called 
in the church people become rigid and it's like a shock and he said because the prince of the power of the air will not want people to use their money towards the divine will he said the question some of them ask if is it the will of god or is not the will of god for me to participate let me go and pray about it and the person said to me but if they go to the shop to buy something they don't find out if it's the will of God for them to buy what they are buying in the shop. When they are paying their rent, they don't find out if, they, if it is God's will. And the person said, when hell is controlling resources, people become rigid when it comes to giving to God. And the person makes a lot of sense because if you look at it, if in case somebody asks you, bring 10,000 between now and next tomorrow, to save the life of your child or your own life, you will give the person 100,000. Or maybe you need to do something that concerns you. We don't argue when we enter into the shop to buy things. We don't argue when we are paying our rent. Is it God's way for me to pay the rent? Or when we are building our house or buying our cars? We don't argue about those things. But when it comes to releasing money towards God, we want to check if it's the will of God. We want to check if it is the Spirit. That's when we feel very different because the devil does not even want money to be available for God's kingdom. If you are still standing there and you know you can afford this money, you can stretch, you can pay the price, and you hear us say we need only 10,000 from you to sustain the money cloud international viewership, and you are standing there without your 10,000, you are not doing yourself good. You are not doing yourself good. So I want you to look at if they look at what the Lord is doing with that station and think about it being taken off. You know, the Lord said to me not to commercialize it. If not, we had companies I wanted to bring out, but he said, no, not, don't commercialize it. It's my work. I will touch the heart of my children to sustain it. So, and you are the child. He said he's, he's, he will touch. You are the son of peace. So act as a steward. The other money we raised for December was is for just part of that, but the company told me they can't wait. We should just give them something small, and that's what we are gathering now. Whatever we are giving now is different from what we vowed, which we are assembling here on December 2nd. So those of you who feel that your resources can be used for the will of God that have come out, lift up your two hands and pray. Request for him something. Request for something from the Lord. Before I pray for you, then I'll give you your number after prayer. Just request, Lord, move in my life as I've responded to you. I want to see your hand strong in my life as never before. I want, I want to see your hand strong and mighty in my life, in my business, in my place of work. May I not have an emergency case in my life? Show up. The way I am showing up for you right now. Show up for me. You are a rewarder. You are a just God. Father, show up for me also. In my own days of adversity, Lord, show up for me. Show up for me in your mercy. Show up for me in your mercy, O oh God. Let me not have an emergency case in my life, O oh God. Show up for me in your mercy. By the greatness of your power, show up for me in your mercy. By the greatness of your power, show up for me in your mercy. Rikali bosetele maya baba, rakala basatali kolo brosetele, lima makende rikala basata. Father, I pray that everyone's prayer will receive an instantaneous answer right now. By the greatness of your power, oh God, that your people will share in the heritage of not having an emergency case. That will live in a realm of all sufficiency at, in all things, at all times. In the name of Jesus, a realm of all sufficiency. A realm of all sufficiency, Lord. To the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. I feel in my spirit that some of you standing before me, you are beginning something in your life. It's like a project you are starting. The Lord will give you a push to the finish you will never stop by the wayside because you showed up when you are needed to sustain these sickness across the nations 
may God show up when he is needed in your life. May nothing come to a halt. May nothing good in your life come to a halt. May nothing good in your life come to a halt. May nothing good in your life come to a halt. May nothing good in your life come to a halt. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord replenish. And may the Lord increase. In Jesus' name we pray. So let me give you your numbers. When you are putting in the money into the pay bill, the pay bill is 950-400, not 307. 950-400. So if you are putting the pay, the, your money, the account number should be your name and the number I'm giving you now. So let me begin from you, sir. You are number one. You are number one. You are number two. Number three. Number four. Number five, sir. Number six. Number seven. Number eight. Number nine. Number ten. Number eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Wait. I am wrong. Sixty-eight. Sorry. You are 69. <laughs> you are 69. Sorry, sir. You are 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91. I think I'll go back to your seat if I give you your number. You are 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. Don't forget your numbers. You are one round and one. Yes, ma. You are one round two, one round three, one round four, one round five. Can you shift this way? One round six. <laughs> How are you doing? Was your number? <laughs> Is it one hundred one? One hundred six. Okay, one hundred six. Yeah. One hundred seven. One hundred eight. One hundred nine. One hundred ten. One eleven. One twelve. One thirteen. One fourteen. One fifteen. One sixteen. One seventeen. Hallelujah. So we need more. Is that not? But we have some righteous guys who gave more than ten thousand. And uh, God bless them. Like me, I give more. Of course, I cannot give God 10,000. My account is crazy. I cannot give God 10,000. No, that is too small in my ranking. So if your rank is big, you increase. You get my point? Remember, I was talking about rank. If, you, if they call for one shilling, equate your rank and say, no, I'm beyond, and increase the money. Do you understand me? So we give according to our ranking. I, I can't wait to teach that revelation of ranking. Maybe next Sunday. So that you begin to enjoy certain blessings you don't see. Are you understanding me? By the time we hit the season we are getting into, blessings will pursue us because his dimension of revelation is bringing his own blessing. Is that not? So now, if you, we have one round, what? 117? 117, is that? You're looking at me, I say 117. You know, when you talk, I can talk. Three. Three. Okay, we need 33. 33 times this is, is 330,000. So, 330,000 is what remains. If you divide 330 into, let's say, let's see and give chance for those that can give 5,000. Where is my, how many people do we need? Because it's not good for you to assume that everybody will give more than 10,000 before you now go and start pleading the blood of Jesus by Wednesday morning. Are you understanding me? So let's be sure we get everything. 330,000. 33 people is 330,000. 330 divide, divide by 5,000. Sixty-six people. Okay, maybe some people are giving online. I don't know. If you are giving, if you are going, if you are following us from home, I want to participate. Just send your text message to my phone. 
and uh, to tell us your name. I don't know if we are still on air. That is, I don't know if we are still on air. But, uh, just send your to my phone. There's a number on the screen. If we are still on air, you put the number on the screen for for those that want to participate. Now, in case you want to give five thousand, stand in your feet. We need sixty-six people. Somebody are saying, "Hey, this is what I've been waiting for." No, but but, but it's okay. Sixty-six people, come to the front quickly. Those that can give us five thousand. We need 66 people for Ondalio. Because we have to get this money. You get my point? You know, we, are, we should be a church that Satan should not dare us with needs. Are you understanding me? I'm, I'm looking forward to when, when, when I bring that kind of $8,000 on you, just supposed to come, don't worry. And you drop a check on Monday of $1 million and tell me, spare the whole church. Is that not where we are going to? May God bring that blessing your way in the name of Jesus Christ. So that when we, when we have such need, you just meet me secretly and say, just take the money. Don't bother everybody so that we keep going forward. I know, I know the Lord will keep sustaining us, keep watching over us. So if you can give 5,000, please come. The Lord will bless you also. Let's, so that by Wednesday, we'll make sure that all the dollars are in place. And we forward it to them in the UK. And then we relax. And then we see what next. Hallelujah. So can we be on our feet to honor these our brethren that are coming out? If you are still there, please come out so that we get this number complete. Can you shift this way a little, a bit? Just shift this a bit. Now, let's pray. Is anybody still coming? Keeper of his covenant, we thank you for these precious souls that have come out to commit 5,000 between now and Tuesday. Lord, you are a rewarder of those that diligently seek you. You know their hearts. You know this is their capacity. I pray in your mercy for increase in these precious lives. That wherever this money is coming from will never run dry. In the name of Jesus. Because they have gotten up to show up in your time of need. Lord, let them not lack a time of need where you did not show up. Manifest yourself in everyone's situation. In the name of Jesus, that as we release this towards your purpose, Lord, let things be released towards their lives. Let things be released towards their lives. Let things be released towards their lives. In the name of Jesus, I bring everyone in this house who gave beyond Everyone stand on your feet. Everyone who gave beyond these thresholds. You said those who sow bountifully shall reap bountifully. Look into our lives, O oh God, and give us blessings that are beyond. Give us increases that are beyond. May we not have financial limitations. Break us free from any kind of limitation. In the name of Jesus Christ. And those who shed their tears, though they may not have, look into their heart and drop money in their hands. In the name of Jesus. Above all, we ask, O oh God, that you rain down your blessings upon this house according to our commitments to you. And you fulfill your promise that a, th a little one will become a thousand. And a small one will become a strong nation. By our hands, oh God, this station will keep broadcasting its signals from generation to generation. And souls will keep being ripped into your kingdom. That there will be no deficit, there will be no setback. That every season we will gather resources in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for helping us to sow beside all waters. You said in your word that when we sow beside all waters, that we're going to get it back. Therefore, let the blessing for responding beside all waters be released to us. Let the blessing for responding beside all waters be released to us. In the name of Jesus Christ, blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Let me give you your number. Number one. Number two, three, four, five. Sorry? Sorry? No, we are not continuing. Your own is 5,000. So where do I stop? Five, six, seven, eight, 
nine. Okay, you are you in the front, you are eight. The one behind you are nine. So I can go back to your seat if I give you a number. You are ten, you are eleven, you are twelve, thirteen, fourteen, yeah, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. 31, 32, 33, 33. So we don't need the rest again. Okay, 34, <laughs> 35, 36, 37. You are 37. You are 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. Can you shift forward? You are 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51. My sister, are you 51? Yeah. 52, 53, 54, 55, 56. You are 55. You are 55. Yeah. 57. You are 57. 58, 59, 60, 61. This overflow. You know what? 61. Is it 61? 60 what? Why are you talking like the voice of many water? 60 what? 63. So, can one person come here and tell me in the ear? 60 what? 68? 66. So, we need that 66 people. Okay, and I said 33. So, how many do we have? 61. So, we need five more people. <laughs> Don't worry, I will give that one. Five, five times uh, five, 25,000. I will give that 25 today. Okay, I'll give that on behalf of my children. Ah, I have forgotten. Okay, yes, I will give that. Let's be on our feet. How has the week been? Do you know that I was your guest speaker? So you have to give me an honorarium because I'm traveling back home. I'm going to home. Is it honorarium? Look at this guy. What paper are you bringing? <laughs> I want to um, acknowledge those our brethren who came from outside the country for us. Is it honorarium? Look at this crowd of spirit members. You are bringing me papers. Is it paper that I'm going to eat? Eh? Okay. You know, you know, we're not taking our offering. Do you realize that? Please, let's take our offering first. I just forgot. Just get your tithes and your offerings together. Oof, thank you, Father. What a week. Do you look forward to another week? Huh? It's coming by and by. It's coming by and by. A better day is drawing nearer, coming by and by. The next one is going to be in November. I will, I will tell you the date. Okay, somebody sent. Okay, some people have sent through my phone. And those that want to be part of it, I can see two people here, which means the money is even. I will still give for my kids no matter what because I want to give for them. Two people have sent. So let's be on our feet. The last thing you are going to do, you are going to pray for me, eh? but let's do our giving first. Just lift up without your offering to God. If you are giving through, be praying for your offering. Those of you who are giving with cash, just pray to the Lord and thank him. Let it be a thanksgiving offering for you. What he has done in our lives the whole of this week. Just thank him. Those of us who came every day, we saw what he did. Those of you who came today, you are just seeing a little. Just bless him. Thank him. I know some of you are living very far. The Lord really take care and help you. Just 
thank him for this week, the whole of this week. Tell him, I'm giving this tithe, I'm giving this offering to you as just to tell, say thank you, to appreciate you for all you did in my life this week. All the visitation, all the deliverances, all you did in my life. Open your mouth and thank him. All you did in my life this week. Lord, I thank you. I use this, my tithe and my offering as a symbol of gratitude for all the visitations, for all the turnarounds, for all the turnarounds this week, for all the impartations, for all the revelation. My fountain will not run dry. Keep declaring it. My fountain will not run dry. I receive authority to operate as a redeemed God. Under you, the almighty God. My fountain will not run dry. My fountain will not run dry. The fountain of sons of God do not run dry. Sons of God are God. Under the almighty God. So our fountain will not run dry at all. Our fountain will not run dry. Our fountain will keep flowing. Our fountain will not run dry. Our fountain will keep flowing. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we ask for an outbreak of finances in this house. In the name of Jesus. A flow, a deluge of financial blessings. Let it break forth from this day in the name of Jesus. I pray, oh God, that you look upon our sacrifices and pour the outpouring of financial blessings in this house. That everyone will live in sufficiency. Everyone will live in sufficiency. You will take your people from lesser jobs to better jobs. You will take your people from low paying incomes to high paying incomes. That whatever the environment is going through, we will be exempted. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. So you make use of the basket around as we sing that song. Heavenly Lord, you are wonderful. You are excellent. You are marvelous. We worship you, Lord. For you are mighty, you got the whole world in your hand. Heavenly Lord, Heavenly Lord, you are wonderful, you, you are excellent, you are perfect. We worship you, we worship you, Lord. For you are mighty, you got the whole world in your hand. Heavenly Lord, Heavenly Lord, you are wonderful. Excellent, you are marvelous. We worship you, Lord, for you are mighty. You got the whole world in your head. Heavenly Lord, Heavenly Lord, you are wonderful. You are excellent. You are mighty. We worship you, Lord.
prayer. We want to welcome our visitors. If today, you know, we did not welcome our visitors last Sunday. So if you are here today for the first time, you were here also last Sunday, please come to the front. We need to acknowledge your presence here. God bless you. Wherever you are, please come. If anybody enter the bus, close it. Nobody should enter the bus if the bus is there. Come up, our guests. If today is your first time, please come. Those of you who could not welcome last Sunday, keep clapping for our guests as they come forth. Put your hands together for them. Keep clapping, keep clapping for our guests. wherever you are wherever you are come you to the front we need to give you a gift we need to pray for you also you are welcome you are welcome those of you that we could not welcome last sunday please come also are you okay with your voices you that did not preach your voice is hanging it's okay Your voice is standing like people that climb Mount Everest. Your voice is not allowed. You are welcome in Jesus' name. You are welcome in Jesus' name. Uh-huh. <laughs> I hope you had a nice time today in the crowd of the Spirit. I pray that whatever the Lord did in your life to remain permanent in Jesus' name. So we have two gifts we want to give you. We have this message, very beautiful message. We also have a calendar and we also give you this form. This form, you are just to fill it and give it back to us. And in case you want to send me for counseling, you, you indicate it here. You get my point? So that we can call you. So, but this message is on MP3 format. You can copy it into your phone, into your hard drive. But any system that is not MP3, the message cannot play. But it's a very beautiful message about how not to be a foolish virgin. I hope some of you know the story of the five wise virgins in the Bible. So it's about, that is what is here now. It will help you to live the Christian life that will help you to be part of the five wise virgins. Do you understand me? But let me pray for you before I give you. Father, I thank you for these beautiful souls that you brought to fellowship with us. We pray in your mercy that the heritage that you brought them here to carry will remain permanent in their lives in the name of Jesus Christ. That these materials we have handed over to them you will use it, O oh God, to establish their faith among the five wise virgins in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So let me start from here. You are welcome. You are welcome, welcome in the name of the Lord.
She left on Thursday. Put her hand together for them. Can we have the mic? And then we also have our sister here. Can you can we have is this mic? On this one. And uh, so you can just stand this way. So we'll begin. Just greet us. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Margaret, and I'm, uh, I've been a Cry of the Spirit member since 2009. And uh, we've been watching live from uh, Dubai United Arab Emirates. And, uh, uh, I just want to tell you people, you're very blessed to be having the services here for us. We watch it online, and uh, it's completely different. So we are really and truly blessed to be here and to be able to worship with you. And, uh, and I hope we'll continue throughout the year. Thank you. God bless you. Yes, let's hear from uh, Praise God. My name is Evelyn Wahumboro. Uh, I was also in, I was introduced to this church by a brother from this church. I've been a member since 2019, and truly we've been blessed. Even though we watch online, uh, like Maggie said, you're really blessed. So whenever you get a chance, or when Dad calls for meetings, please attend because you don't know what you have. Thank you, and I'm blessed to be here. Thank you. God bless you. You are welcome. You are welcome. Yeah. We still have our sister here. God bless you. Yes. God bless you. Yeah. Is that, that mic is not working. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm so glad to be here today. Um, I've been here since last week anyway. I'm Joyce, I'm from the United Kingdom, and I've been an on, um, online member since April this year. So, so, yeah. so I've been watching live all the time from Sunday, and also when you have your um, um, to the school of um, eternal lives, I was well, just, well, just watch online as well. So I'm so blessed to be here today because it's actually, you don't know what you're missing when you're away. So you guys are blessed in this house, you know. You're super blessed. Yeah. Yeah. I've enjoyed myself so much for the last one week now. So it's, it's been a blessing to be here among you. So thank you for all your kindness. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Yeah. Put hands together for all our sisters. <laughs> Hallelujah. Maybe I, I need to pray for the three of you. Can you just come out? Let me just pray for you. And um, we, we thank God for your consistency and, um, and for coming, for the sacrifice. We look forward to more people coming. 
But it's really a great sacrifice. Somebody's flying in. Why you just to move from this place and come here? You are seated at home. Get my point. Father, we thank you for these are precious brethren. We thank you for extending the covering of this work over to the nations they live in. We pray for the rest also. We are, I've been following on TV. Our brethren in Nigeria who are meeting today for the first time in the viewing center. And for every other one across the nations of the earth. We pray, oh God, that the heritage you have released this week will locate their households and begin to take away what is darkness and establish what is light. Let your angels encamp around all of them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you richly. God bless you. Hallelujah. Now, we want to give a shout out to our brethren in Nigeria. I'm sure they'll be there right now. Thank you for being part of uh, the service. Let's just put your hands together. We love you. We, we love you, uh, Pastor Sakwe, and the rest of you. We, 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 we pray that uh, this will continue. You guys will keep meeting. And uh, whatever has been released today will find a full expression in your families. In the name of Jesus. Sorry that we could not broadcast the in-house summit, so you came only today. But we'll see how we can send the messages to you guys so that you can also participate of the rich food. And then we pray that God will increase you. God will sustain you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Let's put that together for them. Hallelujah. 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 So you may have your seat. Few more announcements that we close. Um, we are going to bless marriages on the 30th of this month. That is next Sunday. <clears throat> and um, for the sake of those couples um, who are, you pay your bride price and now want to do the church wedding, sorry, the marriage uh, blessing, it's mandatory that you and your wife must appear in the same clothes. But because of some concerns we have received from other couples, those of you who don't have the money to buy same, same um, clothes, I mean the already old couples in the house, you get my point? The old ones, the one, the, the, the guys, the old guys on crown. So in case you don't have money, don't bother yourself. Just wear whatever you can. And But that day is going to be a unique day next Sunday. It's going to be a unique Sunday because there will be marching in, there will be beautiful stuff, and uh, it's going to be a very beautiful service. So those who pay their bright price this year, and some of you, we send people to follow you. Some of you, we, we have spoken. So even though it's one or two, or three or whatever is going to be a glorious day for you so make sure you wear the same clothes you and your wife and uh, if you have children if you have enough money to spread it to the children fine if you don't have you and your wife is mandatory you must wear the same clothes because the prophetic statement you are making so that we will now bless your marriage on sunday next week and it's going to be televised also it will be on tv and all our brethren across the nations they will also follow if you have marriages that you want god to bless also Follow us on TV, wherever you are, and uh, we'll bless, we'll pray for them. So next Sunday is going to be a unique service. I want to encourage you to come. And like I announced last week, the marriage, the wedding we're supposed to have has been shifted to 12th November so that the things that were not put in place by those involved, they can put it in place before the 12th of November and we'll hold it at a 680 Hotel for uh, space distance reason uh, I'm, I'm receiving a lot of conflicting um, uh, conflicting how do, I, how do I call it I wouldn't say it's report information about uh, weddings in Kenya the roles of foreigners and all of that stuff the, it's, it's too confusing Some, somebody sent me another one yesterday so everyone is looking accurate I don't even know which ones to follow that is why I decided to leave everything in your hands in the hands of those we are appointed. Just do your thing. Me, I will be watching. I don't want my, me entrapped by any, anything. You get my point? Because people are looking at us. People want me to do something, to break one law and they stand on it. Yeah, apostle, I've joined marriage. I don't want to go there. Do you understand me? You do everything on Saturday. When you come on Sunday and I do my own. Are you understanding me? So on Saturday, you do the, the marriage committee have delegated things to you. Sit down, discuss, plan everything. 
do whatever you want to do. The couples that are involved, sit down, decide who should do what, and do all your things. We will show up on Saturday there, but me, I'll do my own on Sunday. Are you understanding me? After you have done whatever needs to be done. So I don't want to be entrapped. That's why I'm distancing myself from everything. Not that I don't know what to do. I'm trusting God that maybe the time has come for us to pull some strings and talk to some politicians to see if they can reverse the laws of marriage in Kenya so they can allow foreign ministers to join so that this issue of putting us away is not helping. Are you understanding me? Because every pastor, every national indigent, or I, I'm told they collect money. Me, there's no way I will collect money from anybody for wedding. For what? I'm told they so see they spend, spend some money to join people. Maybe that's what, it's already a commercial something. That's why they are limiting it. So I will we'll talk, we'll see what we can do. Let them, they can just say foreigners should be joining free. Uh -huh. and you, you, you get my point. So that, let's, let's do, because I was asking one of the lawyers, I said, you gave us permit to be missionaries in the land. Why is the permit not covering joining marriage? It's not part of mission. The man now said it's a mistake from those who framed it. That they have already applied for that. But just that they are not pushing it. Is that not what the pastor is supposed to push? It's all going to Kasarani. Oh, sorry. Let's be on our feet before I start getting angry. What, what am I? <laughs> sorry, before we pray, those of you that are not getting our messages, somebody gave me, listen carefully, somebody gave me a code that you should use to make sure you are getting our messages. It is star five, sorry, star four, five, six, star nine hash. I repeat, star four, five, six, star nine hash. You choose option five, marketing messages. Then activate the name, C-O-T-S-M family. In case you are not getting our messages, okay, I'm going to give this paper to the reception. Meet, meet them and get information on how to be getting our messages. Are you understanding me? Because you are missing a lot, not getting them. Now, we have um, messages in the bookshop. You just go and pick them. They are all there. I can't announce this. The time is really gone. So you pick them. Different messages. All the messages of this week, except for today, are all ready. But by, by, by tomorrow, they will all be ready, including today. But the rest are ready. So go and pick all the messages for yourself. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for all the strength you have given us this week. We thank you for bringing us in safely and taking us back safely every day of this in-house apostolic summit. Therefore, we declare this summit to come to an end and we prophesy the impact to begin in the life of every of our members across the nations of the earth in the name of Jesus. We pray for those who flew in that as they go, let them carry a double portion. Because of the people they need to go and meet, let them go with a double portion. Let them go with a double portion. Let them go with a double portion. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Hold your hand with somebody. Let's sing our anthem. God is building a people of power. God is building a people of praise.
to you. May this song remain a manifestation in our lives. In Jesus' precious name. God bless you. Have a glorious week. Thank you for participating with us in our live service. Be sure to join us again next time. Keep watching Morning Cloud TV. The Morning Cloud Television. The Nation's our mandate making the much needed difference in a terminal generation